Welcome back to Orlando Kart Center for Kart Chasers live coverage of the Super Karts USA Pro Tour. We're ready to get underway with our first pre-final of the season, and it's a big one here, Henry. Full oh, yeah. grid of KA100 Juniors all helmed by Enzo Vidmontian and Ty Fisher on row number one. Yes, indeed. Peyton Westcott and Carson Weinberg on row two. Turner Brown and Jackson Walney are on row number three. Diego Ardiles and Chase Cassioli on row four. Isaac Malkin and Salvador de la Vecchia will round off your top ten in row five. Then it'll be Lillian Scarborough and Javier Herrera on row six. Alexander Vanchev, Martin Jaramillo, Max Christie of the top 15. 50 drivers on the track for 10 laps in Nash Motorsports. K.A. Jr., and I don't think we're going green this first time by. No, we are a very late green, but we're green. And down to the first corner, they get underway, and Vidmontien is clearing through, and that might have been granted a bit of a bummer for the back of the field is in front. There's oh. a big pileup, and it has nearly blocked the entire racetrack. There is all kinds of carnage. In turn number four, about 12 go-karts collided. And I've got to say, even though that's a dozen carts, that could have been so much worse. Credit to the drivers. I was about to say it was probably a wise thing they let it go because the field was quite spread out at a start. What this is going to do, there is uh, one of the energy drivers of the circuit there. Now, there's going to be yellow flags. That does not affect Enzo Vidmontien, who leads the field through the last couple of corners and out onto the start finish line to complete lap number one with Ty Fisher on that bright yellow TB cart in P number two. Oh, is he? No, he isn't because up into third place goes Carson and second place goes Carson Weinberg up into P2. Peyton West got pressure from her teammate. Ardiles gets through, that's for fourth. Vidmontien with the big lead over Carson Weinberg and so many fast drivers taken out in that crash. I mean, everyone is up four to six spots here in the top 10. Turner Brown barely got through it, uh, but not unscathed. The 836, uh, 15th, 10 spots back from the uh, where he started. Long way to go forward for Chico as we head into the S's again. This will be three laps complete. Not a lot of time to recover. Seven to go here at the line. Vidmontien continues to lead, Henry. Yes, he does, by nearly a full second. Although saying that, Carson Weinberg puts in a fastest lap of the race, 57.439 as the uh, driver of 871, the Chad Dockin racing car throws in. He's bringing Ty Fisher with him. Then it's a gap back to Idealism West. 42 that are continuing to run, and uh, from some of the major ones that got turned, like Lillian Scarborough, still only back up to 35th. I think the only one really that is anywhere near the top 30 after all that because so many were stopped is Turner Brown who still crossed the line back in the 15th spot. Actually, he faded to 16th, so potentially some damage for Turner as uh, he falls further back. Und undoubtedly. Now, Vidmontien under pressure for the first time. Carson Weinberg has caught Vidmontien. Carson Weinberg makes the move. New leader. 871 Chad Dock and Racing's Carson Weinberg. Vidmontien though coming straight back in him at the end of Scrapyard Straight into turn number 10. Ty Fisher watches on as we've got a three cart battle for the league. The two cart republics, different teams, but the same chassis. And then the TB Race Lab cart of Ty Fisher as we reach the halfway mark. Five down, five to go. And uh, Ardiles Westcott trying to close in. Vidmontien under pressure. And he doesn't defend. Weinberg back to the front. And this time, Fisher times his move right over Enzo Vidmontien. And Ardiles has now caught the leaders. Four carts in a train. And Fisher defending. This is going to back everybody up. As we now run lap seven out of ten. Oh, there's Weinberg making a look at the inside of the turn number six. Has to back out of it now as the uh, second of the RPG carts, uh, Pink Westcott, is now there as well. Then it will be the black livery uh, Isaac Malkut cart. At the back of this group, you have the Zanella racing cart of uh, Vanchev. Oh, wow. Look at that battle down on through. Vanchev trying to follow, but it was... Uh, Vidmontien going by on Carson Weinberg. So big move there. This time by 
four, laps mark it, three to go. Ty Fisher leads the way down the uh, front stretch. The Canadian out in front. Vidmontien wants that lead back, though he'll take it right away in turn number one, and he'll bring Weinberg with him. Yeah, smart drive, smart move there from Weinberg. Allowed Vidmontien to open the door, and he closes, uh, just enters into second position, but now Vidmontien is the driver that has to defend, and our Diles, Diles, but now drops back. Still, Vidmontien, Weinberg, Fisher, your top three on the scrapyard straight. They'll be getting the one lap to go sign next time by. Down the back stretch here, Isaac Malkett fading low from guard zone. Vidmontien low from Weinberg, still not even yet to the final lap. Big move from Chase Cassiot Lee in the Coastal Link custom printing Nash machine. He makes up a spot there in turn 10. Out of the final turn, coming to the white flag. Let's see if Vidmontien covers off the inside. Down the front stretch, Weinberg will have another run at him. And indeed, Vidmontien low, not low enough. Weinberg's there, and again an over-under from Enzo to take back the lead. Weinberg has to scramble back across the track to stop Ty Fisher from gaining second position. And Weinberg going in very, very deep. Vidmontien runs a little bit wide. And uh, Vidmontien staying on the grass, holds on, and now Weinberg gets shoveled back. Fisher to second, Ardiles to third. No, Ardiles back to fourth. Watch Vanchev as they come through eight and nine for the final time. Here comes Ty Fisher looking low on Vidmontien. Couldn't quite get there. Did not get a good exit. Weinberg will be pressuring him down the back stretch, but he's trying to work with him here. Give him a run. Here comes Fisher. Big send to the inside of Vidmontien. Catches him off guard. He takes the lead. Now they're three wide. Vidmontien to the dirt. Carson Weinberg to the lead. And Vidmontien sends Fisher into the grass. Back and forth out of the final turn. Carson Weinberg will win, and they're going to crash behind him. Vinchev, Westcott, more drivers collected onto the front straightaway. Oh, chaos as they come to the line. And uh, it all breaks loose at the end there. And look at that, up and out of the uh, cart there. That's Garzon trying to get the cart That's cart Jackson back. Young oh, ja trying to move uh, the cart. I think it went on to Garzon. They're trying to help Garzon out. Oh, right. well, there we go. That's a great, great sportsmanship there from uh, the, these young drivers trying to make sure that one of their fellow competitors is okay. And uh, if... That is a sign of that type of race, the sign of things to come. The Pro Tour is in for a very, very special season. But let's uh, have a look as we uh, wait just to see the, or well, obviously make sure that all the drivers in that uh, incident were, were, were uh, okay before we bring you the full results. But while we wait for the results to come up on our screen, we'll give you a little bit of a, a rundown uh, of the top 10 in a moment. But Colin Lloyd is waiting down the grid because he's going up next in KA100 Senior. Thank you very much, Henry. Uh, Colin, what a chaotic race that we just see out there. And you were, uh, you were saying you just wanted to keep your chassis clean. But like, what's the mindset coming into this one? Uh, just be aggressive, but obviously not too aggressive. We still have a final to go through. So uh, even if I lose some spots, it's okay. But definitely want to stay in the front. Uh, just try not to wreck. Yeah, and I mean, I, I really can't fail to mention, right, there's five grand on the line this weekend if you win uh, the main event later today. I mean, mindset, uh, like, like I said, just keeping your nose clean, is that going to make you drive uh, any, any differently? Uh, no, I obviously want to stay clean, but um, five grand's a lot. So uh, I'll stay a little bit more aggressive, but um, obviously you don't want to wreck out and crash, so just keep it clean. Sounds good. Well, thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Well, there's word from uh, Colin Lloyd. Now, let me take you down the uh, results here. Let's have a quick look at the uh, start again. 50 drivers, you can see the driver's still coming around the final corner. Uh, we thought that was a smart move. They did get around turn number one cleanly, but it was uh, th it was turns three and four, the problem happened now. We'll try and see, I think it may have been Jackson Walney who gets turned around. Yes, yeah, side by side, Walney gets turned around and of course, that is there. You can see driver with his hand in the air there. Uh, there was a couple of chain reaction incidents there that, you know, the drivers from 30th, 20th, 30th place are back had nowhere to go. So it was a clear understeer to the final corner with three wide cars on, Vanchev, and then back across the track and out of the cart goes one of the drivers there. Uh, so it's Carson Weinberg, the provisional result. 
Weinberg, Fischer, Ardiles, Vidmontien, and Javier Herrera, the top five. Max Christia finishes sixth, and Peyton Westcott, Salvador de la Vecchia, Isaac Malkut, and Turner Brown recovers to tenth. Eleventh was Max Weil, and then Cash Falba, Jackson Walney, uh, who got turned on Luke Tal, up 11th place, and Fion Shi, your top five. Now, the drivers involved in that last lap incident. Uh, we have uh, Alexander Bonchev, eventually 37th, Chase Gassioli, 38th, Sebastian Garzon, 39th, Martin Yaramillo, uh, 40th, Jackson Young, 43rd, and Gabriel Ballon, uh, also failing to finish. So a dramatic opening uh, race. Um, it was good to see the drivers there, but uh, Alex Searle is in tech with Ty Fisher. Thank you guys, here with Ty Fisher. Ty, that was wild, chaotic. I don't know what other words to describe that. You had an off-road excursion on the last corner there. Just describe that one to me in the best way you can. Yeah, I mean, at the start I knew Enzo was gonna pull away, so me and Carson were able to push and catch back up. But at the end, it was just a dogfight for first. Yeah, I mean, is, is this something that you guys kind of expected, right, with, with, with stakes being as high as they've ever been here at the Pro Tour? chaotic opening uh, opening pre-final to the weekend. Uh, you know, is this something that you expect for the final or latest afternoon? Um, yeah, I mean, it's rough racing. It's for championship, a win, for money and stuff. So people are going to be going at it for anything. And now mindset-wise, right? I mean, you've seen what the drivers are willing to do to, to get a victory out here in the KA class. I mean, where's your head at now going to the final later today? Um, I'm just going to put my head down, drive as hard as I can, and try and get the win. All right, thank you, Ty. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. There again from uh, uh, a very crazy uh, opening pre-final there. Look how much it got rubbed up on Ty Fisher's side pods. K100 Senior on deck as Stephen Miller and Colin Lloyd remain uh, keyed and ready here to go. Again, this is uh, just moments away from rolling here from Orlando. So uh, hang tight, folks, here. Again, we'll be going green shortly. While we continue to wait here for K100 Senior to get the command to fire engines, let's go ahead and hear from another driver who was involved in that crazy last lap, really all race battle for the lead. Carson Weinberg is standing by here with Alex Searle. Alex? Thank you, Xander. Carson, we spoke with Ty. Now we're going to speak with you, the race winner of the pre-final. Describe that one to me. Well, I had a just good race and just had to make my way to the front. I was pretty fast, so caught Enzo, you know, I wanted to get in the lead and try to pull away, but he was not trying to let that happen, and he kept on passing me, so I just was patient, and then I saw that Diego, and then a few of the RPG guys were catching up to me, and then I just started just waiting, be patient, and then Ty went for that pass, and I knew that was my move. Yeah, you mentioned patience, I mean, you know, take us into the driver's seat a little bit. A few more moments.
Carts onto the racetrack for KA100 Senior. Let's see how they will line up for the pre-final. We had 50 carts in KA Junior. We've got 40 in KA100 Senior. Steven Miller will lead us off here in the Sodi Racing USA uh, sponsor division. Alongside him will be the number two plate of Colin Lloyd. And we've got problems on the grid. That's Autumn Fisher, late to fire. She has fired up just within time. She's got to catch up to the pack, though. They are already over by turn number five, Henry. Yes, indeed. Uh, Stephen Iset and Connor Ferris starting on row number two. Peyton Phillips and Eli Warren go from row number three. Fernando Luque and uh, Quinton McPherson on row number four. Finnegan Bailiff and Carter Thompson rounding out the top ten. Don't forget, Carter Thompson in the slow group in qualifying makes up a lot of places. Vinnie Miskellis and Cameron Weinberg, the older brother of Carson. So one win for the Weinberg family so far today. Can Cameron from the sixth row make it to Alex Baldstein, James Overbeck, Blake Nash, the rest of the top 15. Then Patricio Gonzalez, Lucas Sabo, Rodrigo Gonzalez, Jean Reyes, Nikolai Dukov, your top 20. Uh, down at the back of the field, watch for Mario Barros and Henry Wheeler starting 38th and 39th autumn fisher she should get back into her original grip position of 34th as they come to the line here we go stephen miller on the inside and that blue and black nash motorsports machine to the outside as autumn fisher tries to catch up here comes the field going to green Colin Lloyd on the outside, not gonna get the best jump as Steven Iser will jump him and get into the rear tire of Steven Miller. And Connor Ferris slips through to the lead through turn three and four. Your pole man back to third and there's more pileups in turn four. Yes. Four cars collected right there. Well, luckily they all sort of washed out to the outside of the circuit. One of them is a Nash motorsport cart. That could have been Blake Nash because it was right in the middle of the pack. Nash was starting 15th, but Connor Ferris, well, I search aggression going into turn number one, uh, opened the door for him. Uh, Miller in third position, and look at that, that's Peyton Phillips up into P4 for the Ryan Perry Motorsport team. Here comes Isert for the lead. New leader, Sodi Kart, Stephen Isert. What can Ferris do as he tries to fight back? Yeah, Connor Ferris still uh, at least slotted right back in as Colin Lloyd gets around Peyton Phillips there going into the S's. Down the front straightaway we go. One lap complete, nine laps to go. Steven Isert leads us down to turn number one over Miller and then Ferris, who uh, as he uh, got back around him for that second spot. And Steven Miller not going to forget that move, I believe, off the start. Once he gets to Steven Isert, we'll see how aggressive he is to retake the lead. Got to keep the head cool to avoid any penalties because it's just this pre-final going into the main and the officials might have something to say about Isert. But again, that whole lane was lined up to be fair, Henry. Can't necessarily put blame too harsh on anyone. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Miller up on the <laughs> curb there. Wow, Stephen Miller, he absolutely launched that number 973 Nash Motorsport cart over the one curb and that put him up on the trajectory to get to the inside line. And uh, well, you can't break when you haven't got any wheels on the tarmac. So uh, Miller was, uh, yeah, landed cleanly. And uh, now a bit of P3. Look at Colin Lloyd trying to recover on the Inter MS cart as we cross the line to start lap number three. It's Miller, Isa, Lloyd, Ferris, Luque, Peyton Phillips. Then it is a bit uh, seventh position. Uh, we've got Eli Warren followed by Bailiff, McPherson, and Cameron Weinberg into 10th place. So out of turn number six for Stephen Miller and Stephen Isert. Look at Peyton Phillips trying to close back up to them. He needs just one more pass and it'll be five cars together here in this KA Senior uh, pre-final. Miller up and over the curb, pass for second. Colin Lloyd to the inside and clear on Stephen Isert. The national number two plate wants to make it a number one. He starts that off potentially uh, with 100 points if he can win this pre-final. But he's got Stephen Miller still in the way. And that one pass alone, look at them all lined up here, headed into the S's this time. It'll be three complete, seven to go, and we're just getting started here, Henry. Yes, now meanwhile, while we look at this great battle for the race lead, sadly, it's all come undone for Carter Thompson. Uh, out of the race, we've got a new race leader. It is Colin Lloyd. Uh, the train now heads through turn number four. So sadly, Carter Thompson uh, out of the race along with Lucas Sabo and Mick Gabriel. They were the three victims of that first lap action. But it is Lloyd from Miller, Isert, 
And then into fourth position, the number 975 car of Fernando Luque for Super Tune. Yeah, Luque right there here as they hop the curb, and he looked like he was going to go on Steven Eisert, and I believe he did. So Fernando Luque into third. Phillips, Warren, Ferris, Finnegan, Bailiff has joined the party as well in the eighth spot. Back to McPherson, uh, McPherson in the uh, ninth position, and then Cameron Weinberg in tenth. Got to say, very impressive from Eli Warren. He's an independent driver, not with a team. Uh, um, he's got a mate uh, whose surname is Power, and they, they've got a little team together, and they call themselves War Power. But they are an independent run team and a red speed chassis uh, from Taylorsville using Allison Racing engines. And Eli Warren there is in what is, let's have a look there, he is sixth at the moment. Miller looking for the race lead. Miller retakes it at turn six. And it's Miller from Lloyd into seven. And uh, then it is Luque and Iset third and fourth out of turn number nine on the scrapyard straight we go. Then you look back with the white nose cone of Eli Warren now in the fifth position ahead of Peyton Phillips. Yeah, he is uh, uh, right there looking to maybe get back around uh, uh, any more into second for uh, Luke K on Lloyd. Isert alongside for third, not going to do anything. He'll tuck in. Miller gets a little bit of time, and now Fernando Luque, who's always been fast here in Orlando, with a big run towards Stephen Miller, as Eli Warren, with a great charge forward here, a methodical run in this pre-final, he's almost in the lead group as Isert goes through to the inside of Lloyd for third. If there are any families out there who run as independents, they think, well, we can't do the Scusa Prota because we're not with a team. Uh, guess again, as Eli Warren moves into P4 for the Lad and Dad Brigade, make it P3 side by side with Lloyd. Warren has the inside line, and Lloyd, though the interim S driver, fights back. Yeah, and now Steven Isert's gonna lose as Phillips sends it in from way back on Isert and uh, gets around and nearly gets into Warren, who kind of tripped him up. And it's allowed the top two to get away. Six laps complete. Four to go this time by Stephen Miller. Fernando Luque lead our field down across the start finish line. Uh, Peyton Phillips channeling. He's got Colin Brown's crash helmet on, channeling his inner Colin to move into the top five. Isis down to six. New leader, Super Tunes. Fernando Luque makes the move on Miller into turn five. Yeah, nicely done by Fernando Luque, and now they've got such a big gap out back that if Miller stays patient, uh, he might just be able to break away. There's no one necessarily pressuring Steven to send it back on Fernando. He'll have to make that decision all, all by himself as here's a look back to the end of the group here in the top 10. James Overbeck has cracked the main group here as he's gotten around a handful into the 10th spot, moving forward on that PJR MDR entry. This time by, three to go, and Fernando Luque in his second senior season leads the rookie, Stephen Miller, out of the final turn and onto the front stretch. Yes, indeed. Now Miller gets a good run. Will he die to the inside going to turn number one? No. He saw, he probably watched the, ju the junior race, so how many times drivers died to the turn number one and then couldn't get the cart slowed down, and the crossover move happened coming out of turn two on them. So, uh, Miller stays, waits, looks at the inside, into turn number six. Miller, clean as you like, retakes the race lead. Luke checks over his shoulder to see that he's got a three-car length gap before he gets to Colin Lloyd. So Luke knows he can afford to now try and fight back without the risk of being passed. Although Lloyd now beginning to close in and bringing Warren with him. Yeah, and uh, Warren, uh, remember, he was uh, not far off the pace of the leaders, if anything, a little better earlier before the battling kind of sent him back again. So keep an eye out for him to maybe surprise uh, the top three when they get to the final couple laps. And we're already basically there because the two to go signal will fly this time for Steven Miller. A uh, two car length back to Luke K. That'll get eaten up down the straightaway. Uh, Luke K signaling to Colin Lloyd. That hand signal he's saying, next corner, I'm going to go. Just wait. And that means this one right here. Keep your eye on the Super Tune Tony Kart. Turn five inside through to the lead and Lloyd trying to follow but he's not going to be clear Miller hangs on Lloyd actually prevented Miller there from doing the crossover Miller was trying to duck out to get a good run out of turn number six but Lloyd was there and that actually helped uh, Luke now change of fourth position Peyton Phillips up at the P4 Warren is down 2-6 and coming out of 
the turn nine area up Scrapyard Straight on lap nine out of ten. Luke takes a long look over his shoulder, then defends. Has he missed the apex? Has he gone in too deep? Oh, no, he hasn't. It's Isert is. Isert's off and stalled. Eli Warren sent it on Steven Isert, and he got so far wide. That card is broken, and he had to rush off the racetrack there, and the Sony driver just barely escaped utter chaos. White flag in the air, Henry. Yes, indeed. Miller to the inside. No, Luke A defends through one and two. Lloyd there in third. And Peyton Phillips now joins the party for Ryan Perry Motorsport in fourth. Warren fighting a battle to hold on to fifth position. But it's still Luke A defending deeply. Will Miller looks to the inside at the turn number six. He looks, but no dice. Yeah, just I think also kind of holding station right now. Steven knows that he'll get a big run on him on these final few passing zones and can really make a run there. How about this one? No, Luke K covers that one good. Miller couldn't quite get the exit he wanted. He's not there yet as they battle further back down the back straight away. Luke K now gonna fade low. Last second, Miller bumper to him, moves him wide. The second group getting crazy as well and they're three wide for the lead. Colin Lloyd around the outside takes the spot away. Miller to the bumper again, moves him wide. Side by side on the run to the line. I think Lloyd's got the momentum, and it's the pink and chrome Inter MS boys that win KA Seniors opening pre final of the year. Colin Lloyd, exactly what he needs to do to turn that two plate into a one plate with 100 points in the pre final over Miller, Phillips, Luke, Finn Bailiff. Out of nowhere in that main uh, pre final, sorry, he gets to fit by the end. Bailiff made lots of good moves as the second pack of carts sort of broke free at the end there. Bailiff was able to get around Overbeck. Warren finishes seventh. Still a great result for the privateer. Then it's Ferris in P8. McPherson ninth. Revere tenth. Uh, AEM cart is Vinnie Miskellis in 11th. Then it's Alex Fields, Felstein. Uh, Alibi. Kane Martin after a poor qualifying. He moves all the way to 14th as we look further down the order. Now, we did lose quite a few drivers. A good finish there, Autumn Fisher in 29th. But uh, uh, as we look down there, now Cameron Weinberg uh, sadly had to retire. Here is your full race results on screen. And it is Lloyd by 16 hundredths of a second. Uh, the top four separated by half a second. The top nine separated by less than two seconds. Uh, here's the second part of the race. Sadly, uh, Blake Nash, Cameron Weiberg, Henry Wheeler, and eventually Stephen Isaac failed to finish. Uh, we're going to have a chat with the victorious Colin Lloyd. Uh, Kayla Viesca is poised and waiting. Miller is there. And that's a great new car chaser logo on our shirt. I have to say <laughs> thank you to Kayla Viesca for modeling that bit of merchandise for us. It's a new 2024 Zander Clemens. Yeah, and he's just Alrighty. getting us into a little better So uh, uh, thank you guys. Though, so here with he Colin, we're going to follow him in a tech here. Colin, I mean, let's talk about it a little bit, right? You didn't lead a single lap until the final two corners. Walk me through that last lap there. Uh, so through the last lap, I was kind of just trying to keep my nose clean, trying to keep Peyton behind me. Uh, I saw Luke and uh, Miller fighting up front. Um, I kind of knew they were going to get into it since they used to be junior drivers together, and I know they're very aggressive. Uh, I kind of was just waiting. I didn't think I was going to get it at the end, but uh, Steven had ended up put it, pushing Luke a little bit, and I got the run out of the corner and uh, defended in the last corner, and it was all good. Yeah, and it, it, it really seemed that Luke and uh, and Miller were just really had a little bit of more pace than the rest of the field when it when it came to race pace. I mean, what's the plan going into the final? Right, you guys are still missing a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think we have pretty good pace. We might make a little bit of changes just to free up the go kart a little bit. Uh, but other than that, I think I think we have one of the fastest carts on the grid. So I'm I'm okay with it. Well, sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colin Lloyd, uh, starting on the pole position here in the final for K100 Senior. Great start to the day for Colin Lloyd. Now let's take a look at how that all transpired here. First of all, underway and right off the bat, we had contact here, Henry, as Stephen Isard and Stephen Miller got together. And it looked as though, by the judging by the the, the, the angle of Isard's cart that he was having help from behind. Oh, it was Blake it Nash. Yeah, that Blake, was one of the big names taken out there. Blake Nash, uh, who, uh, who eventually finished but then, uh, then retired later on. Carter Thompson was also there. That was a great move from Stephen Miller. Obviously a little bit perturbed by the way that things happened at turn number one. Died back the inside, but of course it wasn't over yet. Now, Lloyd led briefly. Miller took it back. 
right. then uh, here's where uh, uh, Fernando Luque started to enter the frame, right? He got into the mix. Then Isert kind of coming back, moving Lloyd further back. And it looked like for a moment there would have been more that joined. Uh, but this group here, uh, they, they allowed them to kind of get back in. They had a gap when the group was there. Uh, and then uh, ultimately the battling just opened up for more to close in. They just got caught trapped uh, battling back for fourth. This is where it happened for Iser. Watch this. Goes in too deep and it looked like something broke actually. He was getting passed by uh, Eli Warren and there he is off the inside uh, of the racetrack. Uh, but something definitely a miss for him. And then this final corner, of course, Stephen Miller, a little love tap, not enough to get there. Peyton Phillips evades all the carnage to get into third, a good finishing spot. And he's standing by now here with Caleb. Yeah, thank you guys. I uh, here with Peyton Phillips. Peyton, I mean, you were sixth and kept your nose clean the whole the, kept your nose clean, sorry, the whole time. I mean, walk me through that race, right? It was a hectic last lap, but able to come away with the third place. Yeah, to be honest, third is quite a good result because we tried something on the car and for sure it made it a lot worse. But we we know what we need to fix now, go back to the old setup and for the final we should be as fast as the front two. But yeah, it was a fun race, kept the nose clean and yeah, got third. Sounds good. Well best of luck going into the final. Thank you. Carts rolling onto the racetrack here, Henry. But final thoughts from K Senior before we move on? Well, I mean, if, if that if, if Peyton Phillips made the cart worse, if Colin Brown made the cart worse and his driver comes up in third, can't help the rest of the field when uh, <laughs> they, they go back to their original settings. But here we go then, it's Micro Swift. Let's take a look at the starting grid here for your Micro Swift pre-final. Zane Burgess, the Jamaican sensation, will lead us off to green. Uh, here in the Soda USA machine alongside the MPG Motorsports entry of Santiago Orioli. Row two, Marina Brandau and Nolan Carney. Leo Simone and Marcelo Flores for SLA Racing on row number three. Dutch Westbrook and Wingard Schalk and all Benick row four. Row five has Luca Betteril on the inside and Logan Arteta to complete your top ten with Nico Salazar lining up right behind his Orsalon Racing teammate in 11th and Daniel Ramirez on the outside in 12th. Dan Devereaux Racing's fast lady, Taylor Wolf starts on row number seven alongside Liam Nachawati, Ian Hamaker, and Dominic Vera on row number eight. Sterling Mulata, Lawrence Perriman, Cameron Johnson, Mikey Collins round off the top 20 here for the Micro Swift starting grid uh, for the pre-final. But that's only the first half of the field because it goes deep all the way back to 36th. Uh, there with row 18. Here's a look at the rest of our starters as they begin to form. Find your favorite driver. Figure out, well, they'll be uh, ready to go. We heard from Lennox Lockhart during the warm-up sessions. He's happy his first American national race. And uh, the Miami, Florida-based driver rolls off on the inside of row 11. Here we go, coming to green, Henry. Drivers, 36 of them, come into the tram lines. Zane Burgess on the left. Santique, Santiago Orioli on the right. They lock horns again. The green flag goes up. We're off and racing. Burgess leads Brandau sideways in the Velocity Racing Praga Karts. Loses second place. Now, can we get everyone through this flashpoint, this corner cleanly? The micro shifts get it done. Everybody through in the first couple of the corners. Oh, I spoke too soon. Somebody just parked at the side of the track. We'll get a number check on. Number check next time by, but already Xander Clements, Zane Burgess turning tail and trying to run away. Yeah, nicely done for Zane here. Luckily uh, for the rest of the field, they didn't pass each other through turns eight and nine. That's a, a really slow corner that you hurt this entire backstretch if you do make a move. Now though, Brandau gonna go by on uh, Simone for second. So Marina moves up to P2. That'll cost them a little time in the run to the S's. They've got to be smart from here to the end here. Uh, Zorioli, next best, is all the way back in the fifth spot. Is a big bobble from Leo. He goes a little wide. And across the line here, one lap complete. Seven laps to go in the eight-lap pre-final for Micro Swift. And Zane's lead, six-tenths back to Marina Brandau. Yes, the fast Brazilian lady on that velocity racing Praga cart. She has recovered from that uh, half spin going to the board. Santiago Orioli makes the move, and that puts Orioli back into fourth position ahead of Wynn Godschalk and the Curaçao driver. Uh, sorry, that's Dutch Westbrook in the 233 car. I do apologize. Godschalk is back tonight. Nolan Carney in tenth. Now, here's the move from Orioli into fourth position at the expense of Westbrook. The little hand signal goes out to say, come on now, think, let's work together and push up to Brandau in front of us. 
Down into the hairpin. Oh, little bit of contact further back. That's Taylor Wolf getting shuffled wide a little bit. She was seventh last time by. Probably back to about 10th now. Big move to the inside for one of the Orsaline entries. Becquerel to the inside of the 233. Uh, or maybe 243 of Sterling Mulata. So lots of changes in the top 10. The leader is the same. Burgess, although a little bit less this time. Brandau knocked off half a 10. Orioli knocked off two. Santi, quickest car on the circuit in third. There's a move from Wingard Chalk up the inside of uh, his teammate Dutch Westbrook. Uh, no, he's still behind Dutch Westbrook. I think that may have been uh, Luca Pezzaro that he goes past. But uh, further back now, Taylor Wolf uh, is still there, but, because, but uh, Ian Hamaker sadly has retired. So has the 250 cut of Max Santana. But um, I was speaking to Dan Devereaux, and they said that they've been working really hard with Taylor Wolf, and they're just getting to the stage where they're about matching the pace of the front runners. Uh, they need a bit of luck on their side, but Taylor is doing a very good job staying in the top 12 now. She's going to try and fight back a little bit as we head up the straight again. Burgess being caught now by Brandau and Orioli with Simone all on his own in fourth and then the teammates Godchalk and Westbrook fifth and sixth. Yeah, in the run out of turns three, four, now over to five. Look at this for second. Orioli trying to get by Brandau. Not going to happen. So Orioli still looking. Can't do anything there here with four and a half laps remaining. And he knows that they're catching a little bit to Zane, uh, but he feels even better. I mean, last time by, can't blame him here, Henry. He was three tenths better than Marina Brandau at a 60.82. The only driver in the 62nd rack was Santiago Orioli. So he knows how fast that OKP MPG Cart Republic is. He wants to take it straight to the front, not wait at all. Yes, indeed. As uh, Burgess now looks over his shoulder, here we go. Uh, as you see the tail enders coming out of the corner, then across the screen, across the grass, you can see the leaders coming into tournament nine. The, these these micro shift drivers, they're so short. You get a low camera angle, you can hardly see them behind the barriers. They're just these the tops of the little helmets, just buzzing along at about 50 miles an hour. But uh, on lap number five out of eight now, Burgess is under pressure for the first time. Brandau looks to the inside. New leader, Marina Brandau for Velocity Racing, but for not for long. Yes, she holds off Zane's re-attack going into turn number six. And I think part of that was Zane felt the hip check from Orioli, who kind of got into the side of him out of five, trying to get by as well and wanting to make sure he defended the position. Unfortunately, oh, wow, uh, Orioli, he was so far wide, I thought he might have been able to get to the inside. Couldn't. Zane's though, got a big run back to Marina. Let's see what he does. Down to the inside, Burgess. Has not been one to follow, but Marina deep on the brakes and more confidence for the Praga. She goes by, and now Zane's saying, all right, you know what? I tried. Santi, let's have you take a stab at it. He lets him through, and Orioli moves up to second. Uh, now, I know Marina Brandau. She's been learning English in school. Her English is getting better, and I think she's learned how to say no chance, son. <laughs> uh, she defends hard there, going into 2 2 9, but uh, she's under pressure. Orioli. Can he do what Burgess could not? Let's have a look in the turn of five. Yes, he can. Burgess, oh, oh. side by side, wheel to wheel. Marina, though, gets her elbows out. Says, you know, you, she also knows, you know, you're going to have to try a bit harder than that. Yeah, uh, definitely here. So Zane Burgess, let's see. Can he get his elbows out and get around Brandau? Or does he even want to? I mean, I don't know if they could tell how much quicker Santiago Orioli has been. But if uh, that wasn't just toe pace, if that was raw pace, they all should be worried of Orioli. Down the back stretch, still a car length ahead of Brandau, so no pressure there. Let's see what kind of a lap Santiago can do if he can stay in front for a lap. Uh, we're headed this time, though, to two to go, so they, bat they may battle before he gets one. As out of the last turn, six laps complete for the first time in the pre-final. It's Orioli, then Brandau, then Burgess across the stripe. Two laps ago, we got a lead group of five because the Trinity Kart Group, Kart Republic chassis of Leo Simone and the Benick of Wynn Godchalk, Curaçao's own Wynn Godchalk, have caught the three leaders. A quintet of Micro Swifts with a lap and a half to go. Burgess back to P2. Zane Burgess nicely done there. Now Leo Simone looking to the outside. It'll open up the door for Godchalk to get through. 
Just one uh, one little mistake there, cost him one position. And now Godshock also gets through on Brandau. Great couple corners for win, but unfortunately Brandau got the exit momentum back to the inside. Not gonna work with Godshock as much as he wanted. Oh, and a little contact as she was there and uh, asserted her authority on the inside. Here comes Leo trying to go as well. Not close enough. And uh, it's allowed the top two to get quite a bit of a gap, but look at the margin for Santiago Orioli now. It is way back to Zane Burgess. Zane's gonna need to get on his horse. Let's see if the Jamaican sensation can put a sensational last lap together, as he's gonna have to do it all on his own. They are gonna keep fighting for third, it seems. Yes, indeed, and Godchart moves into third position. Brandau tries to fight back, Godchart defends. Now, at Homestead, when Godshot was very, very fast, but he did have a tendency to explore the agriculture a little bit too much. And I spoke to his team and they said, look, if we could just get him to stay on the track, he is going to be a problem for everybody else. But these young drivers, they learn fast at Godshout. He stayed in the track so far and he's running in third. And now he has to defend from Brandau. But it's Orioli clear of Burgess and now side by side for third watch for Leo Simone he's trying to get the undercut on both of them and he tries but to Godchuck who's lost her Brandau back into P3 for velocity meanwhile out of the last turn as they fight oh. for fourth Simone Godshock, they're going to drag race to the line but it's Santiago Orioli who will collect the pre-final win in micro swift to Burgess Brandau and at the line Simone got it by about four hundredths, Leo Simone uh, beats Win Godshock to the checkers. Then the next group, Dutch Westbrook across the line. Then Luca Betril, Carney, Sterling Mulata, Marcelo Flores just shy of ninth there. But what a run forward for Sterling Mulata. He picked up eight spots to get to ninth. And uh, for the first time, took us three races here as that big group comes across the line, Henry. Three races. Finally, on the third race, we survived turns three and four. Yes, and uh, looking at the results going through your screen there, um, obviously you've got Flores, Nachawati, 11th, Ramirez, Taylor, Wolf, 13th, Salazar, and Perryman are two debutants. Lennox Lockhart drops a couple of places, finishes 30th on his debut. Kaysen Sanders, 32nd, and with track is his best lap time, well, it was a 105.0 in qualifying. He has just done a 104.1. One. Yeah, 104.1. So another improvement for him here in this one as the rest of the field cycles through. There's the results all the way back to 30th. And uh, didn't have a ton of DNFs in that one, thankfully. Uh, just uh, only a couple unable to finish. Uh, Zev Godshock, unfortunately, uh, uh, was, uh, I believe, at the tail end. But it was Ian Hammaker and Max Santana, the two drivers that did not get to complete the opening lap. All other 34 cars completed every lap of that micro swift uh, pre-final henry sadly max santana the 258 drivers here he's the only one running a crg which is i find incredible the alessandros racing driver though the crg it was a dnf but uh, there we go uh, so take a break and uh, oh i say, say take take a break no not take a break because we've got junior x30 coming up left i coming up next i thought oh things will calm down nicely now no no junior x30 coming up very shortly. Studies show that even the best current generation of simulators only convince 50% of the human brain that they are real. Here at SimCraft, that just isn't realistic enough. Developed to offer the most realistic karting sim experience in the world, all testing has shown that the physics engine used in SimCraft's Grid 1 model convinces 90% of the human brain that you are actually on track. Now that is the real deal. So you finally want to get behind the wheel, huh? Yeah, I've been shooting for three years and I've never got to drive. Well, you're going to need some more gear than just your helmet. Why don't you go to shopakr.com? They got their inventory online and they'll ship it the same day if you order before 5.30 p.m. Eastern. They got shoes? Yep. Gloves? Yep. Rip protectors? Got those too. Can they make me go fast? No. Here at Acceleration Kart Racing, we've got everything you need to get on track. What happens next? Well, that's on you. Check us out online at shopakr.com. Here at MPG Motorsports, our main goal is to provide the best pathway into professional motorsports for our entire team, drivers and mechanics alike.
based out of Whiteland Raceway Park in Indiana. For more information, contact us at chase at mpg-motorsports.com. Let's go down to pit lane here. You can see Caleb Viesca. What do you got for us? Thank you, Xander. Uh, talk to some of these drivers here early on, right? Uh, we had a lot of guys that were involved in that K8100 Junior wreck. Uh, Vanchev, one of those guys. I, I think he has a total chassis going into the final. Not sure if he's going to go out to the final. Ty Fisher as well. A couple of guys that just have to mentally reset here um, as they get set to go green again for the X30, right? The schedule is a lot more compact, so they're on track a lot more than they were. And I also want to take a look at the front of the field, right? You have Diego Ardila starting on the inside with teammate uh, Dallin Carr on the outside. Let's take a look at Jackson Warney here on his own in a sea of RPGs here. Uh, the only speed concepts cart in the top six here. You have Turner Brown on his outside. You have Ramirez here uh, on the second row with a, with a handful of other RPGs here. So uh, it's going to be it's going to be difficult for Warney as uh, he's uh, the lone speed concepts in the top six. But you can't forget about Sarah Bradley, right? She's starting eighth there on the outside and trying and help out her teammate of Jackson Warney. The engines come to life here. We're getting set to go green. Ka 100 Junior was amazing, and I'm sure X30 Junior is going to be the exact same. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Caleb, and a great point of the sea of pink and purple that Jackson Wolney is going to be surrounded in when we get this one underway here, Henry. Yeah, a sea of pink. That could be describing the Scusa staff here yesterday wearing their pink Scusa strong shirts, and uh, I've got mine on today. But here's your starting lineup. Diego Ardiles and Victor Alencar on row number one. Jackson Wolney and Turner Brown on row number two. Going back to row three, David Ramirez, Cole Medeiros to uh, complete the RPG. Five drivers inside the top six starting spots. And then row four has the Nash Motorsports entry at Chase Gassiot Lee on the inside, Sarah Bradley on the outside. Gassiot Lee and uh, fifth row starter Alexander Voncher both involved in the accident. Ty Fisher, then Alan Bonilla, and Edward Kennedy, another driver. He was involved in the first crash in K100 Junior. He starts on row number six. Yeah, Edward Kennedy was uh, almost injured in that uh, incident. He had to get checked out by the on site medical team. He was that energy driver we saw yes. crouched over the wall. So good to see him at least lined up on the grid, it appears, for X30 Junior. And then back from him, Jose Alejandro Halfin, Max Weiland make up row seven with Nathan Dupuy and uh, Junhao Chang on row eight. That's actually an all super tune, row number eight. Yeah, then it is Tristan Murphy and Major Makovskis, new crash helmet for Major this weekend. Then Max McCarum and Mateus Romalo uh, around it at some time. So we're talking about Edward Kennedy. Do you know that he lives in a town in Quebec called Riviere Baudet? They did not. Well, I, I, there. I, I'm, I'm so glad they decided to name an entire town after me because I'm sure it's uh, only been there for uh, yeah. years. Yeah, definitely, Henry. Keep it going. All right, <laughs> let's get ready for X30 Junior action here. Uh, Diego Ardiles had the biggest margin of pole uh, or over the rest of the field that we saw of all the classes so far in qualifying. Does that put a bigger target on his back, or does that mean everyone else is going to race hard for second knowing he's probably going to get away? His teammates who line up second, fourth, fifth, and sixth all got to see his data, see his video. Have they learned anything? from uh, the 793. We're about to find out. Victor de Alencar on the outside in the triple seven. Here we go to the head flag. Green flag in the air for X30 Junior. We're racing down to turn number one and a good start for Ardiles as he gets away. But Jackson Woolney already up one spot. He moves to second. Now, at the end of qualifying, when we spoke to uh, Diego Ardiles, we said, look, are you gonna work with your teammates? Just look at him. Uh, so Jackson Walney would have seen that, so he knows he has to be the disruptor. Oh, two drivers in the barriers coming out of turn number five, but it is Walney knows that he cannot, cannot let two or three of these RPG cars. Well, there's one gone. That is Cole Medeiros. So of the six RPG cuts, Medeiros is now at the back of the field, but yeah, Walney, he knows that he has to be the disruptor. He cannot let the RPG cuts line up, so he's going to have to try and drag, drag Ardiles into a battle. Side by side, further back, David Ramirez losing a spot to Vanchev. Gassiet Lee getting around Turner Brown. Uh, Diego Ardiles has all of a sudden almost lost all of his help here. All of his teammates are gone. And Jackson Walney right there ready to pounce here as they head through turn five. Not quite close enough there. 
coming out of turn number six and uh, into the sweeper. Just keeping a close eye here on Ardiles and trying to hang with him uh, through turn number seven. Now, Max Weiland, the Magic Kart driver, uh, was one of the drivers that was caught up on turn number five. So we've got tw 20 drivers in the race, or maybe one driver that was involved in the KA uh, 100 Junior uh, incident hasn't gone out. We'll double check that for you, though. Now, here is a problem for Jackson Morning because Victor Allen Carr has closed right in. I think that the Allen car, he won't want to push Walney, he want to pass Walney as soon as he can to then try and use his teammate and push away. But he can't make the move going into turn number one. This 10 lap race, we now start lap number three. Through turn uh, four into turn five, you can see the Allen car was looking low and Walney hurt him, didn't even turn his head and quickly defended. Now he took a look back into turn number six, but he knows that Vic he knows that was his mistake. He just overcooked it, break too late, turn too hard, and the cart rotating. He was fortunate not to get collected by anybody, I have to say. So, still uh, clouds, silver linings and all that. At least while he's in the race and he hasn't got a damaged wagon. Now, it's an RPG 1-2-3. It's our dealers, the Allen car, and Brown. Then, it's the Nash Motorsport cart of Chase Cassio Lee, Alexander Vonchev, maybe now only doing the one class, got a totaled go-kart after KA100 Junior, trying to make the most of this, a gap then to Fisher and Bradley and Alan Bonilla, with Dupuy and Kennedy, two Canadian friends, they are good friends, running ninth and 10th, through turn seven, eight and nine, and uh, the 768 of Turner Brown has passed Victor Alencar and now will he work with Diego Ardiles? The Alencar now having to fight the defensive rear guard action against Chase Gassiotli and Alexander Vonchev. We're only at half distance, and I can't imagine that Turner Brown is going to try and make a move too quickly unless he thinks that uh, Ardiles is a lot slower than him. I think we're going to see now the two teammates work together because Brown has a little bit more pace, I would say, than Alan, Alan Carr. What do I know, Henry? I said that Brown was going to sit behind. No, he doesn't. He makes the move. What a change here in just a couple of laps here. But Chico, Brown leads the way over Diego Ardiles on the RPG Cosmic through the sweeper. Uh, for uh, the one, two, and three run of the team now. Gassiot Lee, to me, is also one of the most impressive drives so far. Big turning up of the wick. Alexander Vanchev calls this racetrack home, so not a huge surprise. He's able to run even better. He was here, obviously, running last week. But for Chase Gassiot Lee, one of the least experienced uh, drivers of the top five, and also yep. to not be a part of a major powerhouse. Nash Motorsports is a strong team, no doubt, but they don't have a lot of drivers, a lot of other ones for them to judge data off of. Very impressive run here for Gassiot Lee in fourth, and he's closing in just ever so slightly here on these four. They may not have a lot of drivers, but as we, as we have seen, they've got some very, very quick ones. Miller, Nash, and now Chase Gassiot Lee, not to mention the Scarborough sisters. And we will, uh, oh, Mateus Romalo, the U-Race driver, is out of the race. As we look back up there, Kennedy up to ninth, Dupuis to eighth, Diego Ramirez, Jackson Walney is still there in 13th position. And I've got to say that Alan Bonilla has, fought back, has fallen back. Uh, Mateus Romalo, 21st out of the race. And uh, it's now looking like a pretty good photo opportunity. One shot, Jay's going to be in prime position. Mike Wallace is going to be saying, Jay, I want this photograph. We've got three of ours in the lead. Well, Chase Gassiot Lee is the person that could potentially spoil the Kodak moment for RPG as we run lap eight out of ten. Our dealer has back the inside, stands on the brakes, on the anchors, gets it slowed down. It's going to bring the Allen car back into play and it's going to help Chase Gassiot Lee, who's only 1.1 seconds behind the leader in fourth. Yeah, not far at all, and that's only the first pass. We expect probably some more here in these final three laps, but our pole man back out in front. 
Vanchev has lost some time. Sarah Bradley in the sixth spot starting to close in. She put a good lap together last time and was three tenths better uh, than uh, Alexander Vanchev and pretty much on pace with the leaders. So took her a minute to get going, but Sarah Bradley on the 758 SCR red speed back in sixth is uh, starting to put some uh, really good uh, runs together here as we put another lap in. Two to go, eight complete. What's our time update that time? Well, the leaders obviously passed. Their laps won't look good, and now it's going to look worse. Ardila is starting to defend that lead from Turner Brown. These two are teammates for the very first time, and they're already dueling here, trying to feel each other out of has the dynamic changed now that they both wear the same colors. Well, uh, they, they can work together, but we're into the business end of things now. There's another move from Turner Brown. 7-6-8 moves into the lead. Now, Chase Gassiot Lee got within about 10 feet of the finish line in K100 Junior before he got caught up in that accident. Now he has a chance to finish the job in K100 Junior. He lacks experience compared to those around him, but he's got raw speed. And he's also got a nose cone on his cart, which he puts to a bit of use there, uh, going into turn number 13. White flag in the air. Oh. And, yep, it's they're not playing nice at RPG to Alan Carr takes second. Nicely done to Victor de Alencar. Now, what can you do here on our deal as <laughs> you kind of just have to follow as look at Alexander Vanchev trying a superhero move on the outside. Bradley with an over-under of her own. Oh, Gassiot Lee gets into the left rear tire of Turner Brown. Chico throws his hand in the air, frustrated at that deal. And now that has allowed these two to have their own battle. Look at the over-under coming from de Alencar as Gassiot Lee tries to hold third there down the back stretch. Nothing yet into the dirty part of the racetrack. Here's going to be the big over-under coming out of the corner. And uh, Turner Brown returns oh! the favor. Gassioli again. That's two races, and he's not made it round the final lap on either of them. Turner Brown also involved. You could see that coming from a mile off. Here we go. Drag race to the line. It's our dealers from the Allen car. And Ty Fisher picks his way through the chaos to take third. You could tell Chico was frustrated uh, with uh, Chase Gassiot Lee. He was already kind of getting into the back of him a little bit in turn number nine, and then turn 10 was trying to feed him another bumper, and it, it just ended up hurting himself. Uh, and you'll see that sometimes with some drivers, Henry, that they, they self-admittedly aren't that good at getting back even and wrecking others because they'll take themselves out in the process and unfortunately <laughs> turn around Chase Gassiot Lee. Obviously, neither one happy with each other, but at the end of the day, both of them just got a bit too uh, out of sorts and uh, paid the ultimate price here and gave up uh, third to Ty Fisher, who came from 10th and 11th, or 11 spots gained for fourth for Nathan Dupuis. He started 15th on the grid, so a uh, fantastic run for Nate. Yep, indeed. After changing teams, Nate Dog has got his bite back. Let's uh, take a look at the highlights here. Let's rewind the cameras back and uh, see what happened here in this X30 Junior pre-final. First of all, of course, the start, right? Uh, there are so many uh, uh, drivers here at one point or another led a lap in this one. First of all, Ardiles, fastest by two and a half tenths in qualifying. No surprise, he was smart enough to get a good jump there to get away because he knew they would be ready to attack him here. And they were attacking uh, all of the drivers on Rawlinson Performance Group, shuffling them away until eventually Jackson Wolney broke through and got the lead. But then here, first up, inside, both of them going by, and then he just locked the brakes up as he was trying to get to the inside in turn number six. From now, Turner Brown, after all that battle, and gets into the lead. The Ardila is right there. And these two, it looked like, as we had two and three laps to go, we're going to be the two uh, main uh, uh, rivals going back and forth for the race win. But ultimately, uh, on this final lap move by De Alencar, he asserted himself into the top two. And then this moment right here, Brown behind, and really he just kind of got too close to Gassi Lee coming out of the corner, and it spun him around on his left front like a top. Yes, indeed. And, of course, uh, yeah, there's a look at the uh, line for the scale. Uh, here comes Victor De Alencar uh, across the scale. He's looking around having a quick chat with uh, uh, Diego Ardiles and... And, of course, you know, they, they want to play this, but you've got a situation where Diego Ardiles, dominant 
in uh, the RPG ranks in the Winter Series uh, for a lot of the championship. And you've got Turner Brown, who has been dominant going back to the Super Nats last year. He joins the team. Yes, you want to, within the team, you want to work together, but they want to establish a pecking order. 100%. That's, that's exactly where I was going with that thought as well, Henry. That was, uh, what we just witnessed was a lot more than just a pre-final. That was the first time they've all gotten to go head-to-head -head under the same color and say, yeah, no, uh, Ardiles still on top. But uh, it wasn't easy. He's got more work to do to try and make that main event a little bit easier for himself here is himself and Brady Yeager. Get that card up onto the uh, stand, and we'll see if we can chat with both our uh, pre-final winner. And I know that we want to hear both sides of what went down between Chase Gassi at Lee and uh, as well with uh, Turner Brown. Here's a look at Alexander Vanchev. Uh, although Caleb, I think, is working his way over to uh, chat with our race yeah, winner. Yeah, so we're Let's actually going to talk to Diego Ardiles first. And... All righty, so we are going to talk to Diego Ardiles, our, uh, our race winner. Diego, what a race, right? Trading positions with your teammate Turner Brown uh, and um, the Allen car as well, going side by side across the finish. Just walk me through that race. Yeah, at the beginning I knew um, Turner was faster than me, so I pushed him like, for three laps, then I knew... He was like three laps to go at the end, and I decided to go by because when he sees like the two laps uh, flags, he's, he was going to start blocking. So I did that. At the end, he, he called me on this corner, and then going through the S, uh, I, I saw like the, the opportunity, and I went by, and I just defended at the end. And I, don't, I think he crashed with, with other driver. Sounds good. Well, best of luck going into the final. Thank you. Well, thank you, Caleb. And uh, no sooner have the uh, Junior X30s left the track, it's time for our mixed grid. It is Master Shifter and KA Master. Yeah, let's uh, see how they will line up. This is going to be a little bit of an interesting way they're going to do the start. Obviously, the Shifter Masters are faster, but yep. typically they have the standing start. So the Ma KA Masters will have to really crawl and give them time to get into their boxes and I believe fire off. We forgot, we forgot about that. We yeah. Got one class doing a standing start, and one start doing a class doing a rolling start. So hopefully no stalls, hopefully <laughs> nothing too awkward, but definitely a bit of a, a weirder uh, combination. But again, you've got 250 plus entries here, Henry, for just eight drivers in each. You can't really burn another hour in the day. But you know what? This year, the schools of Pro Tour is different. And what way, what, what better way to do things differently in some of the semi-pro divisions than this? It's Sketchy Barnes and Michael Ghosh on row number one. Lewis A. Canones and just Lewis Canones on row number two. Then, João Carlos Fregazzoni and Juan Pablo Rico on row three. Ken Schilling and Fabio Mendonca with uh, Brian Chapman not here. And Joe Rook, uh, problem in tech point, he rounds out the nine strong uh, pro, uh, master ship that group. Then back to the eight drivers in KA Masters. You have Mario Barrios, who had a big gap in qualifying, and that's to be expected. He's got double the track time racing. KA Senior and KA Master, of course, uh, didn't get double the track time in qualifying because KA Senior didn't get a lap in. So last in KA Senior quality, first in KA Master quality. He's joined by Jacob Neary. Then it's Michelle Garrido and Diego Rodriguez. Then Ruben Ravello, Alfonso Santiago, and then Tom Gerstner and Charlie Fonseca, who also had an issue uh, at the end of uh, qualifying scrutineering. So here's a look. There is the slow K Master Grid. The officials trying to make sure they gap them correctly. As long as all the shifters get off the line, or at least uh, uh, one lane is clear, we will be good. So here we go for Shifter Master. We get set to go to the lights. Neil Strickland hopping out of the way, a little jump further back, but we're good and everyone's away. And a great start for Michael Gwash, who leads us over to turn one. Next up will be the KA100 Masters. They're headed down the front straight away as well as we battle through uh, to turn five for Shifter Master. Good work from the Scusa officials there to get things underway. As we look top left, you've got the Shifter, and then down in the bottom right, you've got the start of KA Masters and already Mario Barrios taking off, and that's probably the last that uh, his rivals are gonna see of him. Up front, though, it's the number three cart of, Ski uh, of Michael Ghosh, who has the lead. Yeah, Gouache, sorry. Skitchy is second, and then it is just Luis Canones in third. Yeah, so uh, great start for Gouache. He got the whole shot off the line and has already ripped a pretty nice gap back to uh, uh, the man from Bermuda. Oh, oh no! no! 
Michael Gouache spins into the outside retaining wall into turn number one. Locked the rears up, and I don't know if there's something broke there because they were completely locked in a full 360 into the outside wall. Yeah, that looks especially like something broke on the cart because, yeah, he was aiming to go right, and the cart decided it wanted to go left. Yeah, unfortunate for Michael Gouache. Here's your K Masters opening lap. Pretty even up front. Garita or uh, Barrios to Neri to Garrido. One, two, three, just as they were at the end of qualifying as they head down the run to turn number five. Uh, here uh, with uh, one lap complete. Yes, now of course, uh, uh, it's going to be Barnes, Just Lewis, João Carlos, Frag Fraganese, sorry, Fraganese. Then it is Joe Rook up to fifth position, followed by Lewis Aitken, Otis, from Pablo Rico, Ken Schilling. Uh, are your eight remaining, eight, your eight remaining master shifter runners. Uh, now, look at there, Barros in 10th overall, but Barros is leading. There's Michael Gouache just pushing his cart out of the way. I have to say that uh, rumours of uh, Mario Barros's uh, runaway victory, which were perpetuated by myself, uh, has not proven to be true. Uh, we're going to go down, we're going to go split screen, as Caleb Yeska is in the tech area. Uh, after that wreck with uh, Turner Brown uh, on that last lap. Just walk me through what happened there. Um, we, it was the last lap. We were battling in the first two hairpins. I got contact from behind, hit Chico. I got in front of him, and then I blocked here and down the back straight. He tried to hit, hit me off, tried to pump me off. Once again, I had to try to pump me over there, and then push me off, and then we banged tires, and it's always going to happen. We're going to hit tires, and we're going to go up. Yeah, no, you know, you're starting from the back uh, in that, in the final, you know, what's your mindset going into that one? Um, just move up as much as possible on the start and then just slowly make our way up. Sounds good. Best of luck. Thank you. Oh, well, uh, yeah, Chase Gassett, what he kind of described what we saw. There's a battle. Now it's all going off at the start of the head of the Master Shifters race. They're closing in on the back markers in K Master. Skitchy Barnes and Just Lewis Quinones are neck and neck. And now they're going to battle their way through traffic. Yeah, that's how much it's all kind of uh, got everyone out of sorts. The Masters out of turn number six. The Shifter or the K Masters out of turn six into seven. The Shifter Masters are just headed down to turn number four and five right now. Joe Ruck started dead last. He's already up to second in Shifter Masters. KA Masters a little more tame. They're battling for fourth, but the top three have been dead even. That's Charlie Fonseca on the 404, also from last, and now battling into the fourth spot. So uh, two drivers from the rear, one in each division, have uh, made things exciting to watch in uh, the Masters classes thus far. And Joe Ruck, let's see if he has anything to run down his teammate, Skitchy Barnes, who's already got about two and a half seconds on him. Yeah, now Diego Rodriguez and Ruben Ravello, the Alessandro, or was it uh, Ravello and Rodriguez, I think, or was it uh, uh, Ravello and Garrido uh, battling the two Alessandros racing teammates were side by side. And I uh, want to say, there comes the uh, number 601 cart of uh, Luis A. Quinones. And the halfway flags go up the cross, blue and white flags to signal lap five out of ten. Here are the Alessandros racing teammates. Uh, and they're chasing the uh, bright yellow cart of uh, Charlie Fonseca, the Zanella racing cart. So pretty soon, uh, I think that Skitchy Barnes and Joe Rook will be closing in now. Up at the front there, Skitchy Barnes and, uh, and, Luke, and Justin as Canonas were neck and neck. Uh, Canonas has now dropped three seconds and one place to Joe Rook as uh, Barnes approaches the back markers in KA Masters. Now this is a 10 lap heat race. Uh, the finals are 20 laps, so we could have uh, the, the, the Masters drivers going two laps down. And uh, of course, they're in their own private battles, Xander. I know they've got to get out of the way, but they're not going to want to sacrifice their own race. No, definitely not here. And with how close they all are, I mean, even just uh, letting a guy go in the wrong spot could really burn them, much less uh, let them go at all. So. As the Shifter Masters get to them, here's Skitchy trying to get around to the Alessandro's racing drivers. He does with ease. That's Rodriguez and Ravello. Now he's got to get up to a battle in the top three, a top four. That's Garrido and Charlie Fonseca. They're side by side. Barnes says, all right, that's a perfect place for me. I'll get around you both. Joe Ruck going to get trapped behind the traffic, though, 
in the hairpin and nearly get in a bit too deep there with the front brakes, but able to get out of it. And uh, Fonseca has to go back to work on Garino here. This is still with plenty of laps to go as they go side by side in the final turn. I really, I've got to say, I like this. I don't think you could do it in any other category apart from the Masters, who are older, who are, you know, they, they, they're doing this for fun. You know, they've all got jobs to go to on, on Monday morning, so they're not going to do anything silly that's going to risk injuring themselves. Uh, but it is, it's going to be some crazy footage. It is the producer's worst nightmare <laughs> to try and follow the action, but there's plenty of it as the shifters go through. And so Fonseca uh, has managed to overtake um, uh, Rodri, uh, Gar is it Garrido in this uh, sort of... One yeah, he got him. Uh, yeah, we'll know back and forth it's hard to keep up he did get him and then it looked like Garrido almost got him back there but craziness through turn six and there's a little adjustment on the carburetor for Michelle Garrido as he lets his team owner Diego Rodriguez go for a moment gonna drag race him down to the S's here the teammates are gonna let Fonseca get away and Charlie Fonseca has completed the run from last to third back to where he originally qualified still a little ways though to get up to Jacob Neary the formation flying there from Alessandros Racing. That's the three of them. It's like the Red Arrows, but just geriatric version. Now we have got a battle between the 625 of Juan Pablo Rico on that Sony cart and, Lu uh, and uh, Juan uh, Joao Carlos Fragonese. Uh, there is the battle again. And uh, Tom Gerstner is still out there running. Ah, oh, just Luis Canones has retired. I wondered why he was dropping back so quickly. Rico is now third uh, in Master Shifter. Uh, Fregadese and Lewis Aiken own as the top five. Then Schilling, Mendonca. Uh, Barrios has a three second lead over Neri uh, with Fonseca in third. White flag in the air. And uh, that is for six. Zero nine. Oh, poor oh. Pablo Rico. Has he got a left wrist? He just got it all crossed up there. And that cost him two oh. places. Oh, no, he gave the two places back. Because Luis uh, A. Canones up and over. Uh, Freganese. Uh, Freganese checking on Luis Canones. Oh. And the ageless wonder, Tom Gerstner. We saw him cross the line uh, in the Maranello cart. And uh, now, off our screen... Uh, Lewis A. Canones did get back in the cart despite the protestations of uh, Israel Carlos uh, Freganese uh, as we look there. So Freganese is classified seventh uh, because, you know, obviously we're going to split the uh, finishes between Mark uh, Shifter and things. So he's classified seventh even though he didn't complete the last lap, although the, the um, Master 100 drivers were already a lap down. Yeah, so they only got nine, uh, but uh, yeah, let, let's uh, let, let's let's see. Uh, just again, uh, this is a uh, K Masters, uh, Shifter Masters, mixed class sprint racing, and as we take a look back at uh, you know, kind of here's a little better angle. We were from a weird uh, side angle at the moment uh, of the crash live. We have, I believe, a better angle of the incident that we'll be able to pull to and take a look at. So. Uh, Let's see if we can find it. Cool. First up again, Freganese drops the tire. Oh, yeah. And with how fast Canones was, a Canones was coming in, can't necessarily blame him for getting too mad at him. I mean, Freganese was already into the corner. And then here, just uh, still obviously not done with the arguing. Luis was ready to get back to racing. Yep. And uh, thankfully, it stopped at just uh, the brotherly uh, shove right there. Yeah, so uh, Frank and Aze saying, oh, hang on a second, you've just driven your go-kart over my back and shoulder. Uh, you're not getting back in this race if I've got anything to do with it. But uh, then cooler heads prevail. Because I was saying earlier on that the Masters drivers are, are far more sedate and calm than their junior senior counterparts. And then, once again, I was proved to be not quite 100% correct. We're going to take a commercial break here, folks. When we return, Mini Swift will get underway and then warm-ups for Pro X30 and Pro Shifter before the quick lunch break. Brandon, why are there all these charges for just over $200 from Acceleration Car Racing's website? That's because AKR gives you free shipping on orders of $200 or more within the continental U.S. Okay, 
but I thought you were just getting a pair of gloves. That's what, 70 bucks? But if I'm getting a new pair of gloves, I might as well get a new pair of shoes to match. And then on top of that, I'll get a neck brace because with the shipping, it's basically free. I'm David Serra, 18 time Australian karting champion, and we're launching Kart Class. Kart Class is an advanced digital training program that suits a driver who's just starting out in the sport, all the way to the driver looking to win a national championship. In this program, you're going to be learning about how to find the ideal racing line and what an apex is. Braking and throttle markers, wet weather racing lines, and how to overtake other competitors. We target how to brake in the wet weather, and we look on the mental side of kart racing as well with our mental skills coach. At the completion of this program, you'll be lighting up purple sectors in qualifying, know where to defend on the opening laps, and how to pressure your opposition into mistakes. We teach you the tools to be resilient and how to get in the right frame of mind before a race. We look to complete the whole package by getting a strong mindset, a driving style to suit all conditions, strategizing your race, and getting the last 1% from your team. We'll teach you how to win the final lap of a race, drive in the wet like Max Verstappen, and creating the perfect bubble for yourself to mentally be in the zone. To find out more, click the link below. All right, welcome back here. I'm sitting with Joe Rook, second place finisher in the Master Shifter category. But Joe, after a DQ in qualifying, starting ninth on the grid to finish second, I'm sure you're going to take that one. Yeah, I got DQ'd in quali, a uh, fuel issue, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, it was nice to make some passes, have a good start. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I mean, you put on a passing clinic. You were telling me before the interview how much fun it is to drive through the field. I bet it's more fun to start in the outside front row, though. Yeah, it's fun making a lot of passes and putting on a show, but I really like winning. So we took the, the uh, exhaust restrictor out. My body's feeling great. We're ready to roll now. And with how quick you were in that pre-final, did you learn anything that you can carry over into the final? Uh, yeah, I've never been here before. It's a super technical track. There's a lot of nuances in getting the curbing right, and especially in a shifter. I mean, you're driving one-handed half the time. So, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm learning something every time I go out. So it should be a good battle. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Cool to hear from Joe Ruck, and obviously it was a good pre-final for him. Uh, now our final pre-final of the morning before the lunch break gets underway. Pro Shifter and Pro X30, your warm-up sessions will go for just a couple of moments right after Mini Swifts are off the racetrack. We'll uh, leave the cameras on, but go to our lunch break while the, uh, the pro drivers warm up. They've got qualifying and then uh, pre-finals later today. For Mini Swift, though, let's take a look at the lineup. It's Alessandro Trucho on the inside of row number one. Alongside him will be Lorenzo Varela in the 164 Sodi car. That's Nico Orbezo in the RPG Cosmic. The Team Bennick uh, entry of Troy Ferguson. The Cart Republic for Team Ferris Racing of Enzo de Janeiro. And the TKG Cart Republic for Rocco Simone in six. Here we go. 41. Mini Slips coming to green, Henry. Yes, indeed. True show on the left. The Sodi Cart on the right. Flag is in the air. We're up and racing. Trucheau comes across and takes the lead. Lorenzo Varela runs wide. Oh, and a problem going through there. That is one driver up and over. It looked like Enzo Di Janeiro was that driver. But then on the outside, another Sony cart was caught up there. And the driver, well, these drivers have got neck braces on. And I can't see the number. Was it number 158, possibly, of Nicolas Orbezo, who was uh, very lucky there. Uh, the Tony Kart driver potentially will have a little look next time around if we can see that, but he's still in the race and okay. It's True Show from uh, it's is that Rocco Simone up into P2. It is in cart number one four. No, that's Josh, that's Josh Bergman. Bergman. Sorry, Bergman. Uh, from eighth on the grid, now running P2, the Miami based driver. Uh, obviously, family from the UK, and uh, he's a uh, on debut with his new team, Trinity Car Group. He's got new team, new merchandise, new driver, and he's up towards the front. Yeah, Josh Bergman here in the 140. 
uh, leads this pack of four, and they're going to battle further back there. That was for sixth on the racetrack, side by side at the line between Alexis Bayarjan, Colton Schneegenberg. They're both up 12 spots after that crazy opening lap. Through turn six, oh, still battling. Side by side here by Arjan, Orbezo, Schneegenberg. They're not done yet, and in the mix as well is Luke Giglio on the Cart Republic. So all fighting uh, away from the main pack here, and the main pack is still a ways back from Trucho as into turn number nine. Nice, nicely done for Valentino Santi, and Valentino is up 13 spots on the SLA Car Racing Sodi. Yes, indeed, and uh, good start there. Now, by Urjan, uh, having a fight in rear guard action uh, after a disappointing happy hour yesterday, which put him in the slow group. But the PSL karting, again, at top five in the Rotax Grand Finals as a Micromax driver a few years ago, now running Mini Swift and is uh, closing on the front runners. Let's uh, keep our eyes on the battle. Let's also go side by side. Alexander Searle is standing by with Mario Barrios. Hey, thank you, Xander, here with your pre-final winner, Mario Barrios. Mario, I had to rub my eyes a little bit when I saw the entry list, and you're on K Senior as well. Talk about your decision to run double duty. Yeah, well, I I wanted to have a little bit more track time, you know, and I like this track a lot. So let's say try to make the weight for seniors. I'm only six pounds over, so which is not not bad. I'm having a lot of fun. Tell me, it's, it's hot outside, this track is rough on the body. I mean, how are you holding up right now? Pretty good, pretty good. I'm a little tired, but the body is perfect. The reefs, everything is perfect. Yeah, I mean, a senior, 22 spots made up uh, in that pre-final. How confident are you that you can maybe make a run in the top 10 in the final? Well, that would be amazing. My target was to be in the, in the top 20. But I think we can move forward. Top 10 may be achievable. The speed is good, you know? The speed is good. All right, thank you, Mario. Thank you very much. Well, good to hear from Mario Barrios and a smile on his face here as uh, the field heads out of turn six. And uh, we watch Josh Bergman versus uh, uh, Nico Katowski, Lorenko, uh, Lorenzo Varela, and... Uh, uh, Valentino Santian who's already started to set sail away from this group uh, uh, while the one to, or sorry Santian it's Varela that's gotten away Santian's back behind him and it's two and a half seconds already up to Alessandro Trucho and look at this here that is Schneegenberg under pressure from Luke Giglio and around both of them for Maxwell Macha. Yeah, Macha tried to fight up into the top 10. Now we've got Ashton Moon in ninth, Marco Samut only 10th, and uh, gotta say, so impressed by that uh, Nico Katowski U race cart, number 192 has come on in leaps and bounds as uh, there's the number 188 cart of Achilles Perco trying to make a move. Achilles. Uh, so we've got the Prague uh, chassis for Velocity Racing. I'm not quite sure if he is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, lo a lot of battling going on here. And, of course, Josh Bergman. Josh Bergman just moved across from Sodi Kart to the Trinity Kart group. And he finds himself surrounded by Sodi Karts, trying to keep them behind now. Uh, such is life. It's only going to be that way. But the, uh, the America Strong, the, uh, you know, the, the Nico Katowski, who's uh, him and his brother, the whole team, decked out in uh, you know u.s army sort of you know tributes the fallen soldiers uh you know a really good statement and they're doing it on the track as well now there's the uh, lando norris chassis at the back of this group of marco samut chasing ashton Moon with a pink crash helmet the cherry blossom crash helmet and in front of them is alexis Bayerjo running the seventh nicholas orbeso is sixth uh, behind them maxwell matcha uh the top 10 there goes wound at the inside of by Erjan, now I know that uh, Ashton Moon's got a sister who does competitive dance. Well, Ashton uh, and uh, By Erjan now doing their own dance whilst fighting over seventh position. This is lap six out of eight. Uh, time flies by in a hurry in these short, sharp pre-finals. The finals will be a lot longer. Yeah, quite a bit longer here for uh, all of these drivers. Anywhere from about uh, 14 to 18 laps in the main... Uh, and that'll, of course, be the pre-final length of the pro classes later this afternoon. Out of turn 10 on the run to the S's. Uh, this time by, it'll be just uh, three laps to go. Trucho's already hit the time, or about to hit the timing loop here. Alessandro Trucho, three laps remaining 
Five laps complete, mark it two laps remaining, six complete. And uh, 2.9 seconds to get back to Lorenzo Varela. Nobody uh, has been able to match the early lap pace, but now that they've finally gotten uh, their tires warmed up, they're even to the pace at Trucho. And I have to say probably that's a bit of the help uh, of uh, all that running in 32 degree Fahrenheit weather they like to do in Italy in uh, January. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, Southern Italy in January is uh, somewhat warm, uh, but uh, Northern Italy is not warm. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, true show. I mean, he, he he won the race effectively by getting on the first corner, and he did. He, he was helped by a little bit of an incident behind, but he is dominant, and he's. Uh, you notice there, he had a great interview after qualifying. You see, racing in Europe, you know, where there's a lot, there's a lot of media exposure. We're getting that level now with the pro show, with the pro tour and kart chaser in the USA. But again, he's a really good speaker, really good driver. Bergman has uh, now got to try and fend off Katowski and attack uh, Santion for third position. So this is uh, for the inside of row two uh, in the final itself. And a big battle of carts further back going into turn number one. Royce Vega, it's appointed by Royce Vega, Supernat champion, a win series champion, only running 11th for the Bennett team. Yeah, um, a very uh, uh, rough run for him so far, so hopefully... Uh, that can change, but like you said, uh, he uh, didn't get the best start. That didn't help. Here's the 112 of Santian under pressure, battling back and forth. Got through, then over under, and they're still battling down the backstretch on this final lap with Bergman behind. And uh, looks like Katowski's going to have to give way to both. Ashton Wounds caught up, or Bezos caught up, and out front. Alessandro Truscio while they fight for third, fourth, and fifth to the final turn, and on back. It's a dominant run to the checkers for the pole position motorsports Parolin. Then Varela and at the line, Bergman almost there. Not quite enough to get to Valentino Santian. Uh, he ends up fourth. Katowski or Bezo. Great run for Ashton Wound. He picks up three back after losing a lot off the start. Marco Samet picks up nine. Uh, remember, he was our fastest in Friday happy hour, but a rougher qualifying puts him eighth. Uh, at the end of it, Alexis Bayarjan also picks up a good bit. So does Drew Jensen and a few more. Uh, but big losers in that one, like Enzo De Janeiro, who was up front early and crashes out on looks like the final lap on the Team Ferris Racing Kart Republic. So a few issues and a big, big statement by Alessandro Truscio. Yes, indeed. Uh, unfortunately, the only driver that failed to finish it looked like, unfortunately, it was Mika Baruch. Uh, but I'm sure that Mika is okay. He seems to be standing there in the, uh, you know, in his Sony Kart race suit at the Marshall Post. Well, Xander, I mean, as as opening mornings of championships go, that wasn't bad. Pretty wild indeed. Warm-up's about to get underway here for Pro X30 uh, and uh, then Pro Shifter. Uh, and then uh, after that, it'll be the lunch break. Uh, uh, in the paddock, want to announce we are going to take a slight delay in the schedule. K.A. Jr. will go green at 1.10 p.m. here this afternoon. So they're going to delay it uh, about 40 minutes to get us uh, enough time to feed the staff and give us lunch. We'll let these guys do their warm-ups here, and then we'll come back at 1.10 with the K.A. Jr. main event.
back to Orlando Kart Center. It is time to get main events underway for our semi-pro divisions at round one of the Superkarts USA Pro Tour. KA100 Junior onto the racetrack. The biggest single class here this weekend, 50 drivers in total. And well, let's take you through the starting lineup for today's main event after a wild pre-final earlier uh, this morning. First up, of course, Ty Fisher will lead his first career U.S. National to green on the race lap guarding all green TV cart. Alongside him will be one of the uh, uh, probably contenders all year long. We expect to see up front in junior Diego Ardiles. Enzo Vidmontien and Carson Weinberg on row two, Henry. Max Cristea made great progress in the pre-final. He'll start fifth alongside Salvador Dallavecchia with little sizzle Isaac Malcute and Javier Herrera rounding out the front four rows of the grid. We saw at the end before the lunch break the crash that took Turner Brown out of contention in X30. He rolls off ninth here in K100 alongside Max Weiland. Then is Cash Felber and Jackson Walney on row number six. Fionn Shi and Tyrone Kemper Jr. on row seven. Comadiros and Nathan Dupuis, row eight. TKG's got Travis Pettit, the rookie on the inside of Luke Tall on row nine. Indy Anderson and Kai Mars make it an all TKG row number 10 for the first of three pages of a starting grid here this weekend. Here's a look at uh, the second uh, half of the uh, grid from row 11 on back and then all the way back to the final few starters here from the back of the field. Peyton Westcott was in the top 10. So was Chase Gassiet Lee, Edward Kennedy, Alexander Vanship. Keep your eye on all of them to work forward. Problems for the 871 CDR Cart Republic off to oh, the side. Oh, Carson Weinberg. Out on the outlap here of the main event. And now Weinberg crossed the line first. Uh, no, he, he crossed the line. He was in that battle there. He crossed the line right in the front there. And so things go for bad to him. Here we go then to the line. First main event of the 2024 Supercarts USA Pro Tour season. Get it set to get underway. All 50 drivers here on the grid. We're green down to turn number one. Good start for Ty Fisher and it's single file much further back. Hopefully this time the Young Guns can get through turns three and four. Side by side further back. Looks like the field has survived there. Couple off in turns one and two and they'll barrel down the inside through five and six as everybody defending early their position here on this opening lap as we get underway for this 20 lap main event. 20 laps is going to be very hard in what are very warm and sticky conditions in the paddock here. But it is, turn, it is sorry, Ty Fisher leading the train up scrap yard straight behind him, Vidmont Yen, looking to try and get the undercut coming out of turn number 10, can't do it. And now, down towards 11 with Ardiles in third, and Vidmont Yen looks at the inside of Fisher, and that would have been a risky move, but it's going to be Fisher leading lap number one. And again, remember, Enzo Vidmont Yen, Ty Fisher, that spot was a trouble spot for him on the final lap of the pre-final, but already we're defending as Vidmontien tries to hang it around the outside. Fisher just barely hangs on, and we're green. One lap down, 19 laps to go here in this main event, and it is a low line fest here to start this one before we split the packs up. It's six deep here in the lead group, and Vidmontien splits it up as he sends it on Ty Fisher to take over the race lead. Now, Fisher, obviously, his tire pressures haven't come on yet. His car is set up to get better and better as the race goes on. That'll put him in a bit of a struggle going into the first few laps here. That's why he's defending, because he knows he can't lose too much ground before his car comes good. Vidmontien forced the issue. Look at that, Max Weiland. You see Jackson Walden to the inside. Carts two and three wide, 10 deep down towards turn number 10 as we run lap number two out of 20. Yeah, here we go, continuing to watch the field, head through the S's and head on to the front straight away. Uh, one lap complete here so far, make it two. Enzo Vidmontien leads the way down the front stretch towards turn number one and down into the corner. No passes made, a few more drivers defending like Garzon and De La Vecchia, but it's a big lead to start for Enzo as they battle fourth on back side by side, and it's gonna be Ardiles getting the spot lost. De La Vecchia gets through, Wolny can't fall. Look at Mad Max Weiland down the inside and clear on Sebastian Garzon, or no, uh, Javier Herrera, sorry, inside there for sixth and seventh. Looking back in the pack there, you see Jackson Young making good progress for the GFC team. He was caught up in that incident. There's a move from the Speed Concepts racing cart going up a position there. That, I think, was uh, Jackson Walney gaining a spot. And now one of the RPG cards looking to the inside on a super tube machine. That's just in front of Max Weiland. And uh, 
uh, just behind Max Wyland. Actually, I think that Nathan Dupuis involved in that scrap. The 896 nine, Jackson Walney had a mistake in Junior X30. Now he's trying to move to the front. But it's still Vin Montien leading as we complete lap number three. Or start lap number three, rather. Yeah, starting and completing lap number three here as they go through. Three laps complete. Now make it four. We're working down to turn number five. Wyland following on Dupuis, who is all over Turner Brown into turn number six. Those two trying to work together and work their way forward. But Enzo Vinmontien's lead is already up to seven tenths back to Ty Fisher, who is trying to hunt him back down. This is very reminiscent of the pre-final. Vinmontien was very good on cold tires to break away off the start. However, they were able to reel him back in. Looks like Fisher is already starting to make a little bit of progress, Henry, as finally the low lining has stopped, at least inside the top 10 or 12 or so. They've gotten single file and have started to put some uh, good laps together and clean those tires off. Yes, uh, further back, Chase Gassiet Lee has already gained seven places. Wyatt Downing down in 39th place. They were both victims of incidents earlier on. Into turn number one. Now, we see Sal is that Salvador Delavecchia in the 868 for the Chad Dockin racing team. Uh, is, sorry, yeah, it's 860, sorry. My eyes were uh, <laughs> not as young as they used to be. But, uh, yeah, uh, Salvador Delavecchia, the Venezuelan, being chased now by the 896 of Jackson Walney. They both check over their shoulder through turn number seven. And I have to say that after the chaos of this morning's, uh, uh, this morning's uh, pre, uh, pre final, the main event is running very smoothly. Yeah, much smoother here to start. A good opening lap. And since then, they've all been playing decently well with each other. Okay. Now, it just is a matter of hopefully uh, tracking down the leaders for our sake because Ty Fisher and Enzo Vidmontien. If they uh, play it smart, they might be able to make it a two-cart race already while this battling further back continues. That's uh, Ardila is getting through on the uh, one of the TKG drivers in the uh, back half of the top ten. Max Cristea was the TKG driver losing a position, the Romanian-born uh, driver, but still a, a, a good recovery from a bad qualifier for Cristea. And Turner Brown going by Cristea as well. So Brown to six now up from the... Uh, Fifth row for Chico. Ty Fisher closing in. Here is Jackson Walney all over the rear bumper of Salvador La Vecchia. Let's see what he decides to do. This is for a third, while the front two still are about a second and a half up the road. And he's trying to work with him for now as they head down the back straightaway. Yeah, Fisher actually closing back in on Vidmontien. We run lap number six out of 20. A long way to go. Through turn 11, over the curbs, both carts getting significant airtime as Fisher now gets will get a little bit of a slipstream in that TB cart as he tries to chase down Enzo Vidmontien. This is going to be a real case of mental strength for Vidmontien. He's put himself in a winning position yet again. All he has to do now is keep his composure as Waldi makes the move on Delavecchia for third at turn number five and gives Salvador the fingers to say, come on, push, follow me, let's go. There's one way to the front. And they've just got to, uh, Salvador Delavecchia needs to take a bit of a humble pie right there and say, you know what, if I pass him right back now, even if I'm so much faster, we might start to battle and lose any chance of the lead. So he's got to push. Walney paid him respect. He pushed him for a lap. Said, I think it'll be better with me in front. And now it looks like they might be already closing back in because they did not lose too much time in that exchange. And as they head to the S's here, we'll get a better idea. It's all really resting on Ty Fisher's shoulders for the rest of the field. If he starts to make a move for the lead early, we could really open this up and make a big pack at the front. Down the front stretch, Fisher, bumper, and even a little fade as he looked to the inside before he thought better of it here at the end of lap number seven. Well, a couple of laps ago when Enzo Vidmontien led by nearly a second, Ty Fisher was saying to himself, son, the only thing between me and the race lead is opportunity and clean air. And now the clean air is gone because he has caught Vidmontien. He was struggling on tyre pressures early on. Now as we approach half distance, uh, Fisher's pressures are there and his cart has come to life. When will we see the move for the lead? Because I can't see Ty Fisher sitting behind Enzo Vidmontien while his cart is performing so well and with Jackson Walney closing in. Yeah, Wolny is closing in fast, but so is everybody else. De La Vecchia may not be as quick as Wolny, but he's still following along to bring that gap down. Diego Ardiles, though, may be the next one to try and get around uh, De La Vecchia for the fourth spot. 
But like you said, Ty Fisher playing this one uh, conservative right now. And that's smart because, again, these tires, they, they have to not so much worry about degradation, but overheating them and passing, going offline, breaking them harder. That'll do it as uh, Diego Ardila starts to slide backwards. Now Fisher to the lead in turn five, right at the perfect time that Jackson Wolney arrives on the scene. And we've got three just like that here now in the lead group. What does Vidmontien do? Will the desire to lead the race quickly overtake the desire to sit and perhaps let his tires cool for a couple of laps? We go up the scrapyard straight and look over the shoulder from both Vidmontien. Vidmontien looks to the inside. Fisher feigns defense. Not good enough though, as Vidmontien forces his way through. And now he has to cover up towards turn 11 and 12. This was a flashpoint earlier, and Vidmontien again defending a little bit. Walney is there, bringing Della Vecchia and Turner Brown with them. Sooner or later, Xander, we're going to have a five-card battle for the lead as we approach halfway. Yeah, Ty Fisher only got one lap out in front before Enzo said, that's enough, I want that spot back. Jackson Walney still there. De La Vecchia and Turner Brown looming. Here comes Walney to the inside for second. He's through in turn five. Jackson Walney now up to P2. Fisher right back on him there in turn six. Wolney's going to cross him over. He is clear just barely before the sweeper. And they've got to be careful just in the way that they were of maybe the two breaking away. Now Vidmontien getting further up the road. Wolney seems to have settled that argument for the moment with a great launch out of turn nine. In fact, he might be close enough next time by to make a move on Vidmontien. He's almost close enough here in turn 10. Yeah, that was an excellent run through the 8-9 complex there for Jackson Walney. We saw Vidmontier look over his shoulder. Walney gave him a little signal there. Does that mean that Walney's happy to push Vidmontier? That could be a moot point, however, because Turner Brown now enters the picture. Passing Delavecchia for fourth. Five carts, 1.1 seconds, 11 laps of 20 in the books. And Walney's got a great run. The speed concept cart come alive. Is this the move going into turn number five? Yes, it is is Jackson Wolney now trying to uh, uh, live down that X30 junior pre-final he's got a much shorter way to get himself to the top step here in K junior as he leads the way for the first time here in the main through the sweeper five cars in that lead pack before a big gap back to Christia Dupuy and company down the back stretch Jackson Wolney to Enzo Vidmontien Ty Fisher and then you've got Chico Brown and De La Vecchia as a little bit of a move in the break zone by Vidmontien, but nothing to do with it. He's going to stay tucked in, and we'll come this time by to put 11 laps down, 9 laps to go already right around the halfway mark here for K100 Junior as they exit the final turn and head down the front straightaway. Such is the strength of this K100 Junior field that the two drivers who battled over the Winter Series on Diego Ardiles and Sebastian Garzon. Well, uh, Ardiles is only eighth, and Garzon is just outside the top ten. Yeah, Diego Ardiles, uh, uh, at least he's gotten himself around that group, but he's gone forward and backwards already once here in this main, and unfortunately now he's four seconds back from the lead, three seconds from the end of the pack. That is De La Vecchia, who is already starting to lose touch a little bit with Chico. Coming out of turn number nine, and down the back stretch we go. Jackson Wolney is starting to pull a little bit of a lead away from Enzo Vidmontien. Very quick early on, or in the midpoint, I should say, not even early on, because we're past halfway. We're in the second half, and Jackson Wolney is peaking at exactly the right time. Two OTK products, two Cart Republics, and the sole TB cart of Ty Fisher lead this face. The Chad Dockard Racing Cart Republic of Salvador de Vecchia. De La Vecchia beginning to lose touch. And now Turner Brown will start putting the pressure on Ty Fisher because you'll see laps running out. Battle for the lead. Vidmontien on point at turn number six. Walney has to cover off Ty Fisher and comes straight back side by side. Flat out through turn number seven. Great move from Jackson Walney. Jackson Wolney now a little bit narrow into nine. Turner Brown able to open up and give himself a decent exit. It brings De La Vecchia back in the mix and top of the screen. Don't look now, but Ardiles is lurking as Turner Brown to the inside for third. The 836 is through on Ty Fisher. 
Turner Brown now into a potential podium spot. And with the size of this field, we talk about the pro classes. Well, that master $310,000 cash prize purse on the Pro Tour, it includes the semi-pro classes. If they hit the minimum, the same for the pros. The, uh, it is 30 drivers the minimum. We've blown way past that in KA Junior. These young uh, superstars are racing for 1000 bucks to win the opening main event of the season. And as they head to turn number five, right now it sits in the hands still of Jackson Walney. $1,000 for the winner, 500 for the runner-up, 250 for third place, and that's in the finals in the semi pro classes, plus of, course, uh, plus, of course, the championship bonuses. The championship's a long way off at the moment. This is round one of six, the first final of the year, and five drivers are battling for the honours. Walney, Vidmontienne, Brown, Fisher, and Della Vecchia. Who is going to come out on top? We're going to have five laps to go. Vidmontien looks, but no dice. Turner Brown and Ty Fisher now have to work together and bring Delavecchia with them to prevent the two leaders from breaking clear. Walney, though, not defending. He's confident in his cart, and that means that Vidmontien is going to try and push him. Yeah, Vidmontien uh, happy to work with him right now to try and make it a two-cart battle. Jackson Walney doing a great job leading the way as we got problems further back. That is one of the Nash Motorsports machines that has gone out at the exit of turn number nine. Might be Peterson. Yes, it looked like it was uh, Peterson there out of the race. We'll obviously show you the full result there. Now Peterson gets out of the way behind the barriers there. Yellow flags waving and uh, uh, Trap Marshal there. They're standing on the outside of the corner. Uh, putting himself in harm's way to make sure the drivers don't put themselves in harm's way. That's the job of the marshals, why the marshals are the most important people in motorsport. But at the moment, the most important people in this race, Jackson Walney and Enzo Vidmontien. We have four laps to go as we start lap 16 now. Five laps to go, three-quarter distance, and you couldn't put a toothpick between the top two. Enzo Vidmontien playing a very smart final right now. Turner Brown just trying to hang on. He lost two tenths to the leaders last time by with the two of them working together as good as they are. So this could quickly turn back into a two-horse race. Enzo Vidmontien and Jackson Wolney leading here in KA Junior. Diego Ardila is back in that sixth spot. He was making up some time. Uh, he's uh, run a lap that's about even to most of the leaders. It's just a little bit too late, unfortunately, for the RPG Cosmic back uh, away from the top five. He's at least got himself well separated from the rest of the field. It's Mad Max Weiland in seventh over Max Christie eighth, Javier Herrera, and then Fion Shi, who has driven up through the grid uh, a handful of spots to get to 10th. Uh, big runs from the back of the grid as well uh, while we take a moment coming to four laps to go. Sebastian Garzones picked up 22 spots to get to 14. Tristan Murphy up 14 to 15. Chase. Eden Sky Manuchik up 16. Chase Gassiot Lee has gained 30 places. 29 places for Chase Gassiot Lee. He's had a rough morning, but the youngster really in his, you know, it's only in his second season of karting, is storming up through the order. Chase Gassiot Lee, what a fantastic run for the Nash Motorsports EOS kart to go to 16th here from dead last on the grid. Down the back stretch we go again with four laps to go. Can Chico Brown bring that three car pack back to the leaders? He's doing everything he can to keep them within reach as soon as they begin to battle. But Vidmontien just took another look over his shoulder. He knows the longer he can wait, the more patient he can be, the higher his chances are of winning the opening main event of the season and route to a championship. Across the line, three laps to go. 18 what lap now we're working on, 17 down uh, out of the 20 through turns three and four. And again, I don't think you'll see any moves here. Nothing from anyone in your top five. Uh, no, take that back. Ty Fisher moves through on Chico Brown. He takes over third. He'll defend a little into six. And that is about gonna seal them away outside of a major catastrophe for the lead from being able to fight for this win. This is a very, very important few minutes for Enzo Vidmontien. It's not just a case of winning a race. It's been well publicized, that it's not gone well, there have been controversies and exclusions. This is now how much has he learned from those mistakes. The speed is unquestionable. Now Enzo Vidmontien has to work a way out to win and keep it. This is a critical moment for Vidmontien. 
can he keep his cool? Two laps to go. Walney leads. Vidmont Yen sitting and waiting, keeping his composure. And soon he's going to have to pull the trigger. He goes to the outside. Watch for the crossover. Walney defends. Now Vidmont Yen's going to get a good run. There was a move here earlier. Can Vidmont Yen make the move into turn number seven? Not quite, but he's there, Xander. He's definitely there, and Wolney defending. Still, they have plenty of time out back, and I think Enzo's not in any rush to make that bid for the lead right now. There's still uh, enough of a gap out back that they need to wait uh, a little more before they go for it. No! Turn 10! Enzo Vidmontien takes over the lead, catches Wolney by surprise, and now coming to the white flag, he can go on defense. He can start to low line and force Wolney to have to go. Jackson Wolney covered the inside off earlier in the lap. Now he's got to go on offense as the white flag waves. Vidmontien low into one. Wolney for the crossover. Enzo covers it off nice and tight through turns one and two, through three and four to turn five, Henry. Yes, indeed. He checks the inside. Wolney tries to go around the outside. Vidmontien covers the inside line in turn number six. Wolney side by side. He's going to put on the outside line, Walney, at turn number seven. Wheel to wheel, side by side, inch apart, flat out through turn number seven. Now, watch them crash across the curbs as they head down Scrapyard Straight for the final time. Walney's got a good run. Vidmont Yen has got to defend. This is where the big crossover could be. Jackson Walney finds a hole down low. He gets underneath but overshoots it in the dirt. Vidmont Yen, a perfect crossover, able to get a gap. And through the S's, the final time, a retribution story for this young man, Enzo Vidmontien, returns to Orlando, and he wins at home for Trinity Carding Group and Cart Republic. Enzo Vidmontien answers his critics' comments with a big $1,000 exclamation mark. The question was, can he win big? Yes, he can. Walney second, Fisher third, Brown is fourth, followed by Diego Ardiles, who caught Salvador Valavecchia and passed the Venezuelan on the last lap. Max Wyland finishes in seventh, Nathan Dupuis was eighth, Javier Herrera and Max Cristea uh, round out the finishers. And uh, I have to say, for a, well, we didn't have all 50 drivers, and because I think Vanchev and a couple of others, uh, Mark Yaramillo, didn't take the start. Carter Bark is also not out there. Uh, Carson Weinberg retired on the opening lap. But, you know, we talked about the slower drivers being flagged off. Could there be a problem with so many drivers on such a tight track? The answer was no. Not at all. All 50 made it here, and again, in the middle, Big shout out to Chase Gassy at Lee picking up tw uh, 31 positions to get to 16th. Peyton Westcott did the same as well. The young lady uh, from the West Coast, 31 spots gained for Peyton Westcott to 17th at the end. Jackson Young picked up oh. 19 spots to get to 18th. Gabriel Belog, the Canadian, picked up 24 to get to 19th there by the end of the main. But Enzo Vidmontien. Smiling here at the end of that one. It was a hard-fought day for the young man here in K100 Junior as he waits on the scales, and we'll get set to chat with him here. But first, let's take a look back at how he got the job done in KA100 Junior. First of all, of course, in this last lap battle between the two of them. First up, Wolney started defending with about two to go, just barely, but he left the door open in turn 10, and Enzo got through, and that's also when the third-place uh, battle opened up. Then down here, turn five, defending low perfectly. Same thing in turn number six. Blocked it off everywhere he needed to uh, to have the inside for the next corner. Even in turns eight and nine right there down the inside and down the backstretch. But right here, this was the big moment of the race here. Jackson Wolney saw the opening that Enzo gave him down the inside, got into the dirt, and just went a little bit wide. And you saw him look to the skies there for a second. He knew it was over then, and it was all about... The Brazilian-born Ameri uh, American who resides in Orlando, Florida, Enzo Vidmontien, to get himself back in victory lane. And I believe he is uh, working his way through the scales now and standing by with our uh, interviewers here, Alexander Searle. We will pass it on down to you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Here with 
your race winner in the KA Junior Class, Enzo Vidmontienzo. What a run. I mean, you played a really clean race there. Describe to me how you, how you were able to get it done. Um, at the start, I pulled away. Um, then um, Ty and Jackson caught up. I went back for the lead. Then Jackson passed me. I saw he was really fast. I just pushed him, pushed him to the la two laps to go. And the best wins. I can see you're sweating quite a bit there. Temperatures are as hot as they've been. I mean, physically, how tough was that race? Uh, it wasn't that tough. Um, I opened my vibes a little bit mid-race um, so I can get air in. But, yeah, it wasn't that tough. And one last thing. I mean, who took the thank for this victory? Um, Trinity Carving Group, um, Car Republic, BN Engines, my dad, my mom, Cart Class, um, Last Lap Insider. Yeah. Thank you, Edzo. You're welcome. All right, let's bring in Jackson. Jackson. Come here, bud. Hey, the consolation prize for you, a P2 is pretty good, but after a hard day that you had in KA, to drive your way back through the field in the prefinal and the final, I mean, what does this P2 finish mean to you? I mean, I'm really happy with how the first race went. I mean, I was really far back. I drove up, but I still think that I should have been able to get that win. I just made a couple mistakes in the end, but... I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, walk me through that last lap, right? I mean, you you and Enzo were, played a pretty smart final three laps there until the last couple of corners. You made a move there. I mean, is there any place you wish you would have gone at it, um, or do, do, do you kind of feel like that was the move? Um, honestly, I wish earlier on I, I blocked into the tight hairpin because that's the only place where it really got by me. But I think at that point, that was the only place I had. All right, thank you, Jackson. All good. Well, there you have it from Jackson Wolney and Enzo Vidmonti. And obviously a bit heartbroken is uh, Jackson Wolney after that one. You cannot blame him. Uh, fought with everything he had, uh, but just came up a little bit shy. We'll take this moment to step away, folks. We return. You can see him. KA100 Senior is ready to go for their main event here this afternoon. Semi-pro classes, one down, still more to come. We're at a commercial break. behind the wheel from Formula One to NASCAR and IndyCar all the pros start here for more information check us out online at mccarting.com or call us and go racing today here at MPG Motorsports, our main goal is to provide the best pathway into professional motorsports for our entire team, drivers and mechanics alike. We're based out of Whiteland Raceway Park in Indiana. For more information, contact us at chase at mpg-motorsports.com. Engines have fired as we return down to the uh, uh, grid for KA100 Senior. There's a close-up shot of Fernando Luque trying to clear the carburetor out and rev it a little bit as the uh, uh, engines are ready to go. Colin Lloyd on the Inter-MS Cart Republic stole one at the end of the pre-final here. Let's take a look at how they will line up for your KA100 Seniors as it'll be him on the inside of row number one. Alongside him, the Nash Motorsports EOS card of Stephen Miller. 
Peyton Phillips and Fernando Luque on row number two. Finnegan Bailiff, strong run at the end of uh, the pre-final and the leading independent, Eli Warren on row three. Then you go back to uh, row number four, Connor Ferris and Quentin Macpherson uh, on the outside. Uh, Anthony Rivera on the inside of row five alongside the host driver development entry of Alex Feldstein. Uh, then it's Raheem Alibi and James Overbeck, Vinny Mascalis and Kane Martin on row seven. Aiden Shimbashi starts the inside of row eight alongside Mario Barrios. Sawyer Roussel on the team GWR Tony Cart and Quentin Angeli with Lorenzo Kaufman and Lydia Small making a Sodi USA lockout of row number 10. Here's a look back at the second half of your K100 senior field. Goes all the way down to 41 in total with Landon Carwell and Pierce Jaso kicking it off. Yeah, Carter Thompson uh, is look for him. Pierce Jaso a very good result for Pierce. They have Blake Nash and Cameron Weinberg, the 18th row of the grid, a 17th row of the grid, Stephen Isert and Henry Wheeler. They are going to be moving up forward. Sadly, I think uh, Coleman Hall and Mick Gabriel have withdrawn. I believe Lucas Zabo may or may not be in that bunch as well in the RPM Tony car. We'll confirm that later, but at least right now we sit around somewhere between 39 to 40 starters. I think the word we're looking for is plenty. Yeah, <laughs> more than enough. And again, like we said, folks, keep your eyes on those big names on row 17 oh, yeah. and 18. We saw some big movers here. Blake Nash, uh, he's been a, a big mentor for Peyton Westcott and for Chase Cassie at Lee now in the Nash Motorsports camp. He just watched his juniors picked up 31 spots to go from the rear to 16th and 17th. He's got to find a way to go even better. But we know the former Pro X30 veteran can do it. He's got his teammate on the front row, Stephen Miller there in the orange helmet in the blue cart. Colin Lloyd on the pink and chrome and white. Inter MS Cart Republic, Henry. Yes, indeed. And the tail enders catch up to the back of the pack. They're into the tram lines. Colin Lloyd, Stephen Miller, and 40 of their friends bring the KA100 Senior. Oh, the back, Autumn Fisher's pulling off. It's over for Fisher, and it's on at the front. A great start from Colin Lloyd to keep the snarling pack at bay. Hold your breath through the flashpoint to turn number four. They all make it through. Lloyd defending. Miller up to second. No, Miller to the lead, side by side on a turn number six, wheel to wheel between the top two, but Lloyd keeps his nose in front. Miller took a look out back, so he had a little gap back to Peyton Phillips, tucked back in line. Let's see if he, anyone tries any sends here and turns eight and nine. Most are going to cover off the inside. Nothing happening there inside your first ten or so. Battling further back, but single file up front down to uh, the turn ten hairpin, and we got problems in the back. Steven Isert. One of the big names that started from the rear has collided with one of the BJR MDR entries, and uh, they are stuck together in turn nine as Stephen Miller takes over the lead at the end of the first lap from Colin Lloyd. He'll take us to the end of lap one. One down, 19 laps to go here in KA Senior. And uh, it was Landon Cardwell who went off there, and uh, Miller runs a little bit wide through turn number one and uh, managed to hold on to the lead. Lloyd to the inside. It's three wide, and there goes the 958 of Peyton Phillips. That's a move that his world championship winning mechanic Colin Brown will be proud of. Peyton Phillips here has uh, already uh, become a national champ at the Scusa Winter Series last season. He's looking to try and get a Pro Tour title this year, but he's under fire from Finnegan Bailiff who takes over the lead. Finn Bailiff down the back straightaway leads it in KA Senior, and it's a big pack, and he's going to take them all low as Phillips goes low to follow. Ferris to the outside for third. Has Lloyd looking to get through as well. Finn Bailiff and the Trinity Carding Group Cart Republic boys oh. talked about it. He was slated for a Pro X30 campaign this year. He said, I've got unfinished business in KA Senior. I'd like to crack uh, the top five, and we've got red flags. Red flags in the air at the end of lap number two. And uh, you saw a driver, a marshal there at turn number 11, and they're stopping the carts very quickly and uh, they will be bringing the uh, medical vehicle on to the circuit. We are at the end of lap two of 20. We obviously uh, can't give you uh, an update on the driver involved or what happened or what will happen with the restart, but there will be now a delay while the medical team uh, will uh, get to the driver that has been uh, in that incident and we will update you as soon as possible.
Yeah, so uh, unfortunate there, right as we were getting going, uh, everyone off. And yeah, like you said, you can see top corner of the screen where the marshals are uh, with one driver. They're gonna go and check out instantly. The medical team already beginning to roll. And uh, that brings us under our first red flag of the weekend here. Just uh, uh, coming to complete the second lap. We'll go back to the end of lap one, but it won't be a complete restart. Great news for Steven Miller. He'll get to lead a single file start to the lead. And fortunately, unfortunately for Peyton Phillips, that Superman move, he did three wide to the inside. Well, he'll have to try and come up with something else or do that one again because uh, he'll go back to the third spot on the restart. That's why your leaderboard did not change. They did not make the entire field around to the start finish line before the red flag came out. So uh, we'll go back to the end of lap number one results uh, before anything else. And there you can see Blake Nash on the right hand side in the white Nash suit. He's uh, doing some sign language explanation to uh, his teammate Kane Martin because Blake probably had a decent view trying to drive up through the field of uh, what transpired further back in the mid grid. Uh, you can see there in the, uh, the pink crash helmet and the black race suit, that's Autumn Fisher, who uh, pulled off at the start of the race. And she is now gonna be asking the race director, oh, uh, can, I take, can, I take the, can I take the restart? Can I take the restart? Uh, yes, and I, well, I don't know what the ruling is in Scusa, but normally if the cart's not running at the time of the red flag, you're not allowed to restart the race, although it remains to be seen. Well, the update we just got was it appears that Mario Barrios might have been the driver on the ground. Uh, it was definitely are, an RPG driver. Yeah, and so that would be the man that they are checking out, the elder statesman of the KA senior class who is ready or uh, slated to lead the KA master main event to green later this afternoon. But bad news uh, for uh, Barrios, if so. It is the 990, and indeed that confirms Mario Barrios and this may actually be a bit of a godsend for Autumn Fisher because depending on how the rule goes, right, normally it's not when the leader hits the line, it's when the last car hits the line and the full lap is complete. Barrios didn't get a single lap across the timing loop. So if that's the case, then we go back to a complete restart. Well, I tell you who else, it's not just Autumn Fisher, it's Charlie Fonseca, Stephen Isett, uh, and Quentin Angeli as well as Landon Cardwell, who are all thinking, oh, okay, this sounds good to us. Uh, Coleman Hall uh, is not out there, I don't believe. Um, uh, I don't think he's there, but I mean, oh, Mick Gabriel has Mick Gabriel gone turned out. up for the main. Yeah, he did. He decided he didn't fancy the pre-final, um, but he decided to give it a go uh, in the, uh, the the main event. Um, right, there's, uh, oh, that's Mr. Weinberg in the cap. Hello, sir. How are you? Um, and the rest of the uh, Ronaldson Performance Group Collective there uh, watching out their good sunglasses game from most of them. Yeah, so it uh, gives us a moment here to step away, folks. We'll give you an update as soon as we can uh, back here for KA100 Seniors. Uh, main event under red flag conditions for a crash at the end of the opening lap involving Mario Barrios. Uh, we will return with further updates. Con, I need a new 219 chain. I need a 77 tooth through sprocket. I need, I need some more chain lube, and I need it probably as soon as like tomorrow. Mm hmm. Dude, are you even listening? Like, we need this to run this weekend. Want anything else? What do you mean? I already got it in the car on Acceleration Kart Racing's online store, bro. All orders over $200 get free shipping. Oh, um. Throwing a set of tires. Done. Everything you need, all in one place, and shipped to your door for free on orders of $200 or more. Exclusions apply. Shop AKR.com.
Are you looking for an advantage in your competition? Well, Car Class has done the hard work for you. We've travelled to your racetracks to give you the inside knowledge. So what does Car Class offer? We've got drone footage that captures the racing lines, visual markers for your braking points, acceleration zones, and the best overtake opportunities on your racetrack, pedal cam to show you where to brake and when to accelerate, and 360 degree footage to make sure you don't miss any parts on the racetrack. We've covered 13 racetracks in the United States, and Australia, you're up next. So visit carclass.com to get your track information. Are you ready to get behind the wheel? From Formula One to NASCAR and IndyCar, all the pros start here. For more information, check us out online at mccarting.com or call us and go racing today.
So for those watching and waiting here on what is going on for K100 Senior, well, they uh, didn't unfortunately get it through the first lap. Mario Barrios was the driver involved. He was, uh, I believe, some fractured ribs and complaining of the back pain. So just to be safe, they transported him to the nearby uh, on-site me uh, nearby medical center for further evaluation. Uh, but he was up and alert and on his two own two feet, just uh, in a lot of pain after a, a nasty crash on the opening lap. That has what put us has put us under delay while we wait uh, for the uh, medical team to get clear or a replacement one to be ready uh, before the K seniors get back underway. So uh, now it appears that the command has finally been given for them to suit back up. And we are going the full restart distance. 20 laps, put it back up, scrub that opening lap and a half. Colin Lloyd will get another shot to lead us to green uh, here with now just 38 drivers uh, set to get underway. A100 Senior presented by Sodi Racing USA. Uh, you can see all the drivers have gotten their engines for the most part started. Looks like one, maybe, oh, all good. So here we go. Uh, it's time to uh, uh, consider it a mulligan and uh, get back out there again. Good news, as we mentioned, for the likes of Steven Iser and, and others that were collected in opening lap carnage. Uh, bad news, obviously, for a handful of drivers who are starting tail end of the field that were making up some time. Uh, but for uh, a number of them, including Autumn Fisher, this is a massive save if she would have been able to make it. Unfortunately, though, the mechanical that took her out on the warm-up lap, that will sideline her for, uh, for the day. Yeah, very unfortunately, I saw that uh, uh, Autumn's mechanic, Talitha Tarr, walking with the number 967 car to rather forlornly back to the TV car garage. Stephen Isett also not out there with damage as well. So uh, Isett out there, but Landon Cardwell is back in the race. Uh, so yeah, he was uh, very, very fortunate indeed. And uh, we do wish uh, Mario Barrios well. We'll get an update as we can later on. But the drivers are back in formation. This is take two in KA100 Senior, Colin Lloyd, Stephen Miller share the front row of the grid. Nick Phillips, Fernando Luque on row number two. Flag goes up and we are off and racing. And Miller trying to go around the outside. Lloyd holding the inside line. They're almost too wide through the kick. Oh, Miller getting sideways through the cutback there. Holds on to it. Lloyd leads down into turn number five. And uh, there's Connor Ferris up into fifth position. A bad start for Peyton Phillips. He's dropped back, but it's Lloyd and Miller still 1-2. Fernando Luque gets a good start. Bailiff's still about a pretty decent one himself as they all pop the curbing in turns 8 and 9. 
and headed down the backyard, uh, back straightaway. Once again, James over back there, side by side with Anthony Rivera. And we got a challenge for the lead this time. One corner sooner, Miller and Luke A get by on Colin Lloyd as Connor Ferris tried the inside on Finn Bailiff. Couldn't quite do it, but just like that, and a repeat already, Stephen Miller first lap. He'll oh. lead it as Ferris gets in a bit too hot, trying to get around Finnegan Bailiff. Taps into the left rear tire of Colin Lloyd, and uh, now Bailiff loses a spot to Peyton Phillips. Ferris goes back about four to five. We're now back underway. One lap complete. Stephen Miller leads us down to turn five. Already Cameron Weinberg has cracked the top 18 from the back of the field. Now, okay, there are one or two drivers who are not out there. But I'm looking down there, how many got? We had 40 drivers on the initial entry. And we have had 34 drivers take the restart. Henry Wheeler, Carter Thompson, Christopher Guillem and uh, Guillem and uh, Javier Diaz outside the top 30. Uh, Barrios, obviously, Angeli, Isaac, Fonseca, Fisher and Coleman Hall did not take the restart. Out of the back hairpin we go here. Now a big gap back from Finnegan Bailiff in the fifth spot. So about a five car break up front almost two as uh, we put two laps in the books uh, we'll keep you updated Blake Nash and Cameron Weinberg like you said two biggest movers up a number of spots even with a few dropping out that's still a pretty impressive opening lap for the two of them and uh, we'll see how much further they're able to climb up Weinberg just got to 12th he picked up another four that lap so Cameron moving forward working lap three still Miller leads to Luke K, to Lloyd to Phillips Finn Bailiff there, trapped back in fifth, losing a little bit of time to the leaders here in the opening couple circuits uh, as we work lap three. Looking at the, the, the midfield pack there, you can see that Cameron Weinberg, well, he is going to be up in about seventh position if he carries on. we got a new leader, Fernando Luque, uh, into the race lead at turn number nine. Will Miller fight back? Will Lloyd go for a move? No. Then it's Peyton Phillips after a poor start. Phillips is now in the fourth position, but there's a big gap developing back to Finnegan Bailiff in fifth, and then a huge gap back to Overbeck in sixth position. So if uh, Weinberg continues his upward trajectory, he'll get into sixth position before too long, but then the big gaps appear, and it's all down to how much these carts you're looking at now battle through the kink. It is Luque, Miller, Miller to the inside, put the 14-year-old Nash motorsport driver back in the top spot, but only for one corner because Lloyd takes over. Miller tried to over-under him. Now he looks back, sees Luque is there. He'll try to find a hole and just barely gets in line as Luque cuts him a break, lets him on through. Miller defending a little bit there through turn number nine. He'll hold the spot, and this is going to allow Finn Bailiff to close back up. James Overbeck back in six. Eli Warren in seventh. All licking their chops here as the lead pack already slicing and dicing. And it's Miami, Florida's own Colin Lloyd that leads us to the infield chicane to put four laps in the books. And once again, Miller deep dive on the inside to take over the lead. He'll hold it across the line. Lap four led by the 973 down to turn one. Here we go. The last time I saw a deep dive like that was when my ex missus were looking through my history folder on my laptop. But uh, it is Miller, Lloyd, Luque, and Phillips. The top four. It's Lloyd back to the point at turn number five. And uh, here we go. Uh, the this is allowing Finnegan Bailey to close back in. Cameron Weinberg is 10th, Mascalis 9th, Rivera, and the independent Eli Warren still in 7th. Still close together if anyone else wants to send a diver. How about Peyton Phillips? Come get you some. Inside and clear on Stephen Miller for third. That'll bring Bailiff into the mix. Miller says, work with me. I'll get back uh, up there as uh, Phillips covers off the inside. He's got that bumper crushed in a little bit, but I don't think it's pushed in necessarily. Uh, no, just riding a little bit lower. My mistake. So through the S's, Miller, oh. another sweet move down the inside. He loves that pass uh, here, and it's easy to do when they're not defending or not looking for it. So Stephen Miller taps the helmet, says, please work with me, boys. I don't want to lose this one, but I definitely want to lead us up there. Is check out Cameron Weinberg working Vinny Miskellis through turns one and two. He'll put himself into the ninth spot now for the back of the grid and back up for third. The battling continues. Phillips and Bailiff go by Miller. Here comes James Overbeck trying the inside. Not going to happen. Well, the top two, Lloyd and Luque, have now broken clear from this battle for third position. It's Phillips. No, it, yeah, it's Phillips, the Ryan Perry motorsport driver. There's a move. That is uh, Finnegan Bailiff into the top three. Miller and uh, who is that behind Miller? Overbeck 
with red crash helmet up the inside and suddenly from a really strong position about three corners ago now Peyton Phillips is back into sixth position yeah now uh, oh. here comes over back giving Miller his own move but a taste of his own medicine unfortunately he goes wide after the contact move Peyton Phillips to fourth and Bailiff gets some breathing room Eli Warren next up here as uh, the, the field continues to roll through turns one, two, three, four, down the run to turn number five, and over back low, Phillips goes lower, <laughs> and Miller over unders them both and says, all right, you boys want to fight back for fourth? I'm going to see you later. He gets by, and here comes Eli Warren. He'll get around to Overback for the fifth spot. Well, Eli's friend, Mr. Power, uh, who... Uh helps uh, Eli with their own little team, War Power Racing. Well, uh, uh, more power to War Power because Eli Warren is in the top six of the Scusa Pro Series K100 Masters final. But I tell you what, he does not want to look over his shoulder because Cameron Weinberg is now right behind Overbeck and up into eighth position. Cameron Weinberg here has uh, now finally got this group. Now, the gap up front is pretty substantial for Finn Bailiff to try and hunt down. And the same for Stephen Miller. 1.9 seconds for Bailiff to the race lead. Last time by, he was about a tenth to two tenths slower than Colin Lloyd and Fernando Luque, who Lloyd, by the way, had gone through to the lead. Here is uh, Warren on the bumper of Peyton Phillips out of turn number six. Just not quite uh, able to uh, get around him yet. But he's keeping a close eye on him here as they go through the, the quick kink at turn seven. And again, Cameron Weinberg, his progress may end at about fourth or third based on how this race is playing out here. It'll just really depend how early the leaders might decide to battle. I mean, we're not even at halfway. I wouldn't bet against Cam I mean, yes, anything's at play. But yeah, the win is not out of the question. It depends on how the leaders battle. Finally, Lloyd and Luque look to be playing nice. No toys have been thrown out of the pram yet, but yet is a big word. Yeah, yet is a very big word here. Stephen Miller, uh, that time by, and uh, that group, they were still, though, slower than the top two. Bailiff was even to them as uh, now they battle again. Phillips to the inside and clear on Stephen Miller. Finally, seems like they've uh, uh, solved their differences for now. Overbeck also getting around Eli Warren, and... Uh, now with, again, the, the ever once in a while interlopers from the Pro X30 class that join these K100 senior drivers is Weinberg, picks up another one, gets by Eli Warren. It's kind of opened a bit of a gap for the newer drivers to rise up and see who's going to take the reins and, and, and build their own kind of core of, you know, who they trust to follow and who they're going to instantly dive bomb when they catch. And that's kind of what this race seems like it's been to me here, Henry, is nobody really trusts anyone to put good laps together. That's why they all want to pass each other. Some part of it might be a bit of ego. Some might be they think they're faster, but I think a lot, nobody really knows what to expect of the rest. Well, of course, with the rule changes this year, there are no pro drivers in this class. In years gone by, you would have seen a whole host of X30 pro drivers in this field. It allows the, the unsung heroes, not the lesser drivers, but the, you know, the, the, the KA100 specialists, they can now establish themselves as stars in their own right. They're not battling against the pro drivers. It's all about themselves. So they do have to establish a pecking order. And of course, they now have to work out, like you were saying, who to trust and who not to trust. Well, I tell you what, uh, trusting Cameron Weinberg to make the move there as he drives at uh, Chad Dockin Racing uh, Car Republic chassis past Stephen Miller. So Weinberg, starting on row 17, has just passed Miller, who started on the front row at half distance. Yeah, half distance, right? We still have a lot of racing to go. We're waiting to see if the leaders fade at all. Finn Bailiff, uh, even to them, to maybe a tenth or two slower at 2.1 back. Cars or, uh, Cameron Weinberg, within four seconds. I mean, you need a lot out of him, uh, but it's, you know, at least he can kind of play leapfrog on the way forward. Put a good lap together, toe up to the next guy. Put a good lap together, toe to the next guy. And even up front here, it started to separate a little. You could see there in that moment we caught the top two. Colin Lloyd has started to inch away from Fernando Luque. It's up to three tenths now between uh, the two drivers that lead this race. Consider this. At the start of the race, Cameron Weinberg he took the start four seconds behind uh, the, the pole man. After 10 laps, after 11 laps, Cameron Weinberg 
is 3.7 seconds. Oh! Oh, oh, over back, up and over almost. A full 360 and he keeps it pinned. Are you kidding me, James Overbeck? I think he might have hit the pylon uh, going over the curbing. Wow, what a move to hang on to that thing and not give up. He kept his foot floored once he hit the ground. James Overbeck, probably with some kind of damage. We'll get a view of that here in a moment, but wow, what a save. He only lost two spots from absolutely destroying uh, himself there through that left-handed kink. All I'll say, is that James Overbeck is very, very grateful that there is a race suit dry cleaning business here in the paddock because after that, he may need one. It's hard to believe that there may be no damage at all to James Overbeck. I have to imagine that kind of a chassis slam might have tweaked it a little, but he looks fine. Let's uh, take a look at what just uh, transpired. Oh. Here is, uh, oh, here's the live shot here. We'll go back to that in a moment. We just made a pass. Yeah, he made yeah. another pass. That's on Miller. Miller shaking his head being like, I, oh, there is the, there it oh. is right there. That's that's from uh, the incident from the back cam. That was uh, from the uh, one angle. I know we have another one as well that, we'll ha that we had on the live shot. But, yeah, he just literally clipped the pile on it and nearly tipped him over. I mean, those... Well, I won't say anything what my personal opinions are about the pylons that are dotted around the circuit. I know that they're for the rental cart racing, but uh, um, th there's a couple that have been removed since the last time I was here. Um, that was, well, well, cart chaser had their first viral moment of 2024 in the Scusa Pro Tour, courtesy of James Overback. And of course, we're making light of it now. The fact that uh, Overback is absolutely fine and is still in the race is the most the main concern because that could have been uh, very different. All half right. distance, wow. halfway. Oh no, we're, well, that's lap, lap 13, so we've got seven laps to go. They might have shortened this one here, folks. That's that's what it might have been. Looking at the flagman that was putting up a, a, a motion there to the drivers. I think we're on two to go. Yeah, I, I, I think we're fighting for the win. I think we are on a shortened race here for the final due to the time constraints. And now we've got a fight for the lead. Luke Lloyd side by side to the uh, sweeping turn number seven. Okay, two seconds separates the top two and third place driver Finnegan Bailiff. Yes, you can tell the business has picked up Lloyd. It's a good run up Scrapyard Straight. And uh, Luke Hague moves across to defend. He stays on the inside line. Now he cuts back to try and get a good run to prevent the over-under. Lloyd is there, wheel to wheel. But Lloyd's on the outside line. He went round the outside here in the pre-final. He's going to try it again in the final. And he does it. Two out of two for Colin Lloyd. That's a speciality. That's a brave move. And now that's brought everybody really close to the picture. White flag in the air, Lloyd low. Luke Hay says, you go to the outside, I'll try it too. Couldn't quite do it. Here comes Finnegan Bailiff trying to steal one. Here's Peyton Phillips and Cameron Weinberg back in fifth. Luke Hay, little bludge, little over the curbing. Side by side for the lead. Peyton Phillips to the outside, Bailiff to the inside for second. And Colin Lloyd with a big lead now to Phillips who goes to P2. Cameron Weinberg is the back of this lead group. He's going to run out of time. Oh, Phillips and Lloyd together, and they crash. And who was that? That was Luke. Luke. It was Luke. They've taken another person out as well. It's now, uh, it's now Finnegan Bailiff ahead of Cameron Weinberg. Finnegan Bailiff has never won a U.S. national before. More carnage. Miller is out. Lloyd trying to get back going. Final time though. Finnegan Bailiff is finally a national race winner at 21 years old. He gets it done in KA Senior. Would you have predicted this podium? Because it's going to be Eli Warren. One for the independents on the podium. Finnegan Bailiff, a first time winner. Cameron Weinberg making up 33 positions and in a dead heat almost. Eli Warren, he is the only independent driver in the field. And he's on a national podium at the Scusa Pro Tour. James Overbeck finishing 14th after doing a full 360 in the air. And rounding out the top five is Kay Martin, who had a massive crash in qualifying. Blake Nash, sixth, gaining 30 places. Henry Wheeler, seventh, gaining 27 places. 
Connor Ferris, and I think that might be a first top 10 national finish for Raheem Alibi. We spoke to Sean Bailiff, the Trinity Carting Group owner uh, on the grid talk last night. He said that in the pro classes, they'd be put behind the eight ball with the late change, with the warm-up session, what have you, and have you. But he said he's a racing dad, and his fatherly pride will be overflowing right now. It's a Cart Republic 1-2 for Trinity Karting Group, and then Chad Dawkin racing last to second for Cameron Weinberg, and Finnegan Bailiff is a national race winner as he rolls through the scale line. The Trinity Karting Group boys are packed up behind him here. There's his dad, Sean, as well. What a run here and a great father-son moment captured here on camera. Finnegan Bailiff is a race winner. Let's get that helmet off and we'll talk to our uh, main event winner here in KA100 Senior as he stands by with Alexander Searle and Caleb Viesca. Caleb, let's send it to you. Thank you, guys. Finnegan, what an end to that KA100 senior final. You were sitting in third in that last lap, and with three quarters to go, you took the lead. Just walk me through that. Yeah, it was great. I, I knew I didn't have quite enough s speed to get up there and actually, like, run them down, but I knew I just had to be in third. And once I was there, they kind of got into each other, shoved each other off, and I just had enough of a gap to not have to block or anything, and I just won. It was great. So, uh, quick question. How long has it been since your last win? I can't even tell you. Too long. There you go. Too long by Finnegan Bailiff. Wow. Congratulations, dude. Yeah. Thank you. Unbelievable here stuff for Finnegan Bailiff as he ends up with the win. Uh, his first Supercarts USA win has got a Stars victory from ye uh, years ago. It's been a little while. How about it? Uh, and definitely a, a well-deserved water bottle for Cameron Weinberg after that impressive drive. Last to second place here in the main event and uh, almost ended up stealing the win away off that last lap carnage. Yeah, Caleb? In the first one, right? Yeah, which I went for. All right, here we are with uh, Cameron Weinberg. Cameron, you had a, uh, I guess, bring it in early into the pits in the pre-final, and then you finished second there in that KA100 senior final. Uh, what a comeback. Yeah, um, I, I, I mean, I got to thank everybody for, for giving me a package that we could actually run up there. I had a really good start after the red flag. The first start wasn't good for us, so I was, I was glad that there was a red. But um, when I got on that first start, I, I gained so many spots in the first couple corners. But through the end, I was, like, losing a little bit of pace, just, like, a little bit, a little bit. But I saw them start to come together, and I was like, all right, let me be patient and then just kind of watch out for what they're going to do, and it, it worked out good for us. Well, sounds good. There you guys have it from Cameron Weinberg from last to second here. And very quickly, uh, Angel Harris. Well done to Angel Harris. The housekeeper turned mechanic, turned national podium winning mechanic. Well done to Angel and Cameron Weinberg. I know we've got some highlights from that uh, K100 senior main, but uh, we're already rolling right into uh, the Micro Swift main event. Santiago Orioli, class of the field here in that pre-final. He'll lead us to green alongside Zane Burgess in the Sodi USA number 255. Marina Brando uh, got to the point early in that pre-main. The young lady for Velocity Racing, Brandau Motorsport Praga starts in third alongside Leo Simone. Curacao's Wynn Godchalk and Luca Patero are on row number three. Nolan Carney for the U-Race team and SLA Racing's Marcelo Flores share row four. Liam Nachawati and Daniel Ramirez round out the top ten. Taylor Wolf for Dan Devereaux Racing and Nico Salazar are next. Lawrence Perriman, Dutch Westbrook, Logan Arteta, Sterling Mulati are top 18. Uh, down there you can see the rest of the top 20 on what will be a 36 cart grid we can't take you through every single there uh, name franco schiavo is uh, there in front of his older sister liani schiavo and watch for zev godchalk at the back he was excluded oh and there was a driver stopped coming out of turn number 10 couldn't quite see who that was ian hamacha as well started towards the back but they're coming to the line it is the mpg cart of santiago orioli Flag goes up, we're off and racing. Orioli and Burgess side by side with Brandau in third. But Orioli hangs on to the lead ahead of the Scusa Winter Series champion, St. Burgess. But for how long? Well, 
Yeah, just thought about a move there, but backed out of it. Simone going a little bit slowly, coming out of that corner in the uh, fifth place machine. And now Marina Brandao and Zev Godchalk will start to make their move up towards the two leaders as we come through the uh, the trouble spot in the last lap of the K100 senior final, turn seven, eight, and nine. Down the back straightaway, Orioli, Burgess, and still side by side battling for third and fourth. A little tuck back in. Uh, there with Brandau fading to the inside and not doing it. The driver that we did lose on the opening lap, Dominic Nagel in the 252, oh. unfortunately, will not uh, get a lap across the loop here in this one. But with these kids, Will, one lap down, 17 laps to go here in the 18-lap main event for Micro Swift. Orioli's lead already getting evaporated by the draft. Burgess is right there, and it's about five deep before you go back to uh, Luca Becquerel and Liam Nachawadi in six and seven. Already today, the... Sebi Pro format is creating some new stars for you to follow throughout the entire season uh, because these drivers have been out three times on warm up. Uh, they've been out four times uh, in the first half of the day, so you're getting far more familiar with them. This is the youngest category in the Supercarts USA Pro Tour, so we're not just making new stars in the Sebi Pro class, we're making new stars in the sport, and two of them who have been at it right across the 2024 season so far in the Winter Series and nose to tail with Marina Brandau and Curacao Zev Godchalk side by side for third. So as they head into the S's here, Brandau over Godshock and then Simone uh, out of the final uh, turn. What's the gap back to Luca Becquerel? Is it opening up? It looks like it is uh, a little bit uh, for, to the Orsland Racing uh, Perilin driver across the line. Uh, about the same, maybe a little bit less up to the top five, but the top two uh, pulling away as Zane Burgess is glued to the rear bumper of Santiago Orioli right now, Henry. Yes, he is indeed, but like we said earlier, these two drivers, they battled it out in the winter series and uh, they, they get on very well, the families get on very well, and uh, yeah, they trust each other. They're working together. We haven't seen much working together in the two KA classes, especially the seniors. The kids showing how to get it done. Brandau, she has got uh, her head down and she's been pushed along by Godchalk and Simone. And we've still got a lead group of five. And then a gap back to Becerro, Nachawati, Flores, Taylor Wolf and Lawrence Perryman. Yeah, Taylor and uh, Wolf, Lawrence Perryman up both two and three spots respectively. No big movers too high up the grid. Dominic Vera's picked up 10 back from the tail end of the field to 23rd. But as we cross the line with three complete, well, your update on where everybody stands lap time-wise, it's uh, a little further back now to the group in sixth and on back. This leading group of five already pulled away a good bit. Brandau to the inside for third. She'll take that spot away from Godshuck. And uh, hot off the heels of the fastest lap of the session by about three-tenths. Marina definitely has some speed early in this 18-lap main. Plenty enough to go and reel in the top two. Yeah, Godshall could briefly pass Brandau for third, but Marina thinking to herself, look, I, I, my cart is fast as we just, as uh, she's just proven with a personal best lap of a 61.493. And Godshark though, is decided, no, no, my Benick is quicker than your Praga. And Marina Brandau is saying, but no, my Praga is quicker than your Benick. And they're side by side, and Leo Simone is saying, well, my car Republic is going to be better than both of yours if you don't get yourself sorted out because the two leaders are suddenly pulling away. Uh, Burgess, the uh, Sodi USA number 255 car, has been absolutely planted on the rear bumper of that newly livery red and chrome MPG Motorsports uh, uh, machine for is it the uh, what, what's the, uh, the young family teammate name that uh, Orioli has got? They got in the back of their race suits, the Ocar Ocala. Oh, oh, oh the uh, Orioli Kart Performance OKP, OKP. Uh, suits they have as well for yes. the, the father son team. Here is uh, uh, under the MPG banner, kind of helping their mini and micro program is his dad, oh, uh, right, helping yeah. to allow them to race a little more, trading some of their services for some more seat time. Uh -huh. And uh, obviously, he's got their brand up front here right now. They don't have a team here this weekend, I believe they'll be gearing up for uh, probably the Stars Championship Series, some of the more Midwest races. They've got a very busy operation up in Indiana that's growing at Whiteland Raceway Park, but Santiago Orioli is bleeding the red and white colors at the pointy end of the grid right now, and it's only going to be easier as they fight again for third. That's Leo Simone with a send on Godshock, but a little bit too deep, and it ends up net neutral. 
And don't forget, obviously, and now you can see Godshot say, well, come on, let this push, push and work together. Don't forget, these are youngsters. They're racing for the same prize package as the juniors and the seniors and the minis. You know, a $1,000. That's a heck of a weekend's pocket money, I tell you what, although I think that uh, mum and dad, whoever wins, go, no, I'll take that, thank you very much. Let's, uh, let's call it repayment for uh, cart parts bought and broken over the, over the course of testing. Yeah, so uh, uh, let's see. Hopefully no more bro broken parts for him uh, this weekend. He's in a great spot, but we thought those guys up front in K Senior were in a great spot <laughs> as well. Uh, out front by about a second right now. Still really early on here in this uh, Micro Swift main. Now, let's get set to go side by side, though, as we do have uh, the man of the hour. And unfortunately, uh, it, it, that honor should go to Finn Bailiff, and you can make an argument for it. But you got to also give it to James Overbeck. Let's hear what that wild ride was like from inside the helmet. Caleb. Thank you, guys. I'm here with James Overbeck. James, through the chicane, you go absolutely airborne. Walk me through what was going through your head as you're seeing this guy. Um, yeah, I, I knew I had a fast car from the pre I me. Mean, I was clear of the field by 210. So I knew I just had to make my way forward. And I was working through the field. And I eventually caught up to Stephen and Peyton and they they were falling back and i knew i had to go on to have a chance to win so i get up to him i i pass both of them and i don't know steven just starts racing me really aggressive and just every time i pass me just passes me right back so once i got around him i wanted to block into the last hairpin and i guess i turned it a little early into the s's and i hit the pylon um i definitely didn't mean to do it but um, I spun around the air, I saw the sky, and then all of a sudden I landed. I'm going forward again, and so I just kept going. The, the cart was bent really bad the rest of the race, but I was still fast somehow. So um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I think I crossed the line forward, so I, I got to be happy with, the, with that, especially since the cart was completely bent. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Sounds good. Well, there you guys have it. That's James Overbeck from midair to third. What a turnaround, and it sounds like uh, if it was third, then there may have been some more scrutineering to our original top three of Eli Warren, Cameron Weinberg, and the race winner, Finn Bailiff. Hopefully nothing too major, but wouldn't be surprised trying to avoid all the carnage if Cam Weinberg got, might have gotten a pushback or something of the sort. It's past 30 go-cars, there's a lot of checkups <laughs> to the mid-pack. Yes, it, indeed, and uh, yeah, so the plane landing on runway four is the James Overbeck uh, from Orlando. As uh, Marina Brandau, uh, Wynn Godshock, and Leo Simone have finally settled their differences and fallen into line single file, but uh, there is a 1.3 second gap up to the two leaders as we complete lap number eight. Yeah, down the front stretch to turn number one for Santiago Orioli and Dane Burgess. And for the first time in a little while, their gap out back has started to shrink. Marina Brandau picked up about a tenth and a half, nearly two tenths last time by, mostly on her own. You can see the gap back to win Godshock. He's not necessarily close enough where he's kind of pushing her away uh, from uh, uh, the rest of the group or pushing her forward. She's doing that by herself. So uh, impressive speed from the Velocity Racing Brandau Motorsport Praga. And back from the top five, well, it's a pretty big gap, but there is a massive battle going on uh, further down the field, starting at around 9th or 10th, looks like. Lawrence Perriman, Taylor Wolf, Sterling Mulata, Marcelo Flores, well, this kind of high-speed chess match rolls on. Check out some of the midfield fights that we got going on here in this yeah. Microsoft main event. First up, you go back, you find these two. That's Becquerel and Nachawati, and then you go to the edge of the top 10, and you see this massive gaggle. Headed into the S's right now, Henry. Yeah, that's uh, uh, Mr. Francisco in cart number 221. Liam Francisco, he is uh, leading this group. In, let's have a look there. It's just outside, I think, is that 13th place on back behind Sterling Mulata, Dutch Westbrook, and the rest. Uh, and then, yeah, Liam Francisco's got a whole host of contenders behind him. Here they come. Uh, there's a ball there. Is that Troy Ferguson at the inside? of the number 228 cart, uh, Lawrence Perriman. Uh, so the, no, that's Dutch Westbrook, sorry. So uh, Taylor Wolf is there in cart 231. So my apologies, it wasn't Liam Francisco we were looking at. There's Taylor Wolf, the young lady for Dan Devereaux Racing. And uh, at the, well, the, the, the target was a top 10, and uh, she's eighth at the moment. Uh, and then behind, yeah, here we go, with the black nose cone 
on their cart. That would be a so it was a Sony cart, and it's the number two three six of Michael Collins. And uh, Michael Collins there running in 12th position at the moment, uh, with a whole bunch of drivers still behind him. Yeah, quite a bit there all the way back. I mean, that group is uh, pretty deep. It goes to about 16th to Logan Arteta in the uh, 254, as here's a little bit of defending and an over-under from Lawrence Perriman on the 243, and able to get a round of Sterling Mulata. So back up front, though, while we were able to go back to the midfield for a little, it has changed. Zane Burgess now leads, and Brandau has arrived, and so has the rest of the top five here. It's a five-car lead group coming to seven laps to go, Henry. I can see. Did you hear that bell ringing? That's the dinner bell. Uh, everyone now wants to be first to the table. Brandau looks to the inside of, Burg uh, of Orioli. Sorry. Uh, Burgess now leads. He's played the waiting game for 11 laps. Now it's time for him to go. And uh, Zane Burgess, he likes the Tigers way and fights up through the pack. But he now has to learn how to defend because he doesn't need to because he's always running at the front. Then there's the Benick in fourth place of Zev Godchuk. So we've got Jamaica. We've got Oriohu, the 206. We've got Jamaica. We've got Venezuela, Brazil, Curaçao, and Canada with Liam Nachawati in sixth position. I'm um, looking down to see, yeah, he is the Dallas, Texas-born Liam Nachawati, the first American in this final at the moment. Great, great racing, great international caliber field here at the Scusa Pro Tour. Yeah, fantastic to see all the different nationalities represented here in Orlando. Again, over 250 drivers into the micro slip field. Out of the 40, it's come down to these five might be a little less there. Oh, oh my goodness. Santiago, oh, Santiago Orioli just about his head taken off by Wynn Godshock, who had nowhere to go as Brandau and Orioli collided. And uh, now Burgess to Brandau to a big gap back to Orioli and Simone for third and fourth. You know when people complain about the cost of safety equipment in karting? I don't care if it's a thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars for the neck brace and crash helmet. That is why you pay the big money for the safety equipment. Orioli and Simone and Nachowati are, are there. Are, are back, uh, Godshark has, has carried on, but it is now. It's the Jamaican sensation, Zane Burgess and the Queen of Brazil, Marina Brandau, battling for Micro Swift honors with just a few laps to go. Down to turn number 10, side by side again for third. Leo Simone and Santiago Orioli continue to battle. So it is gonna be Burgess versus Brandau, Brazil versus Jamaica as they exit the final turn. And to the start finish line straight here, 13 laps complete, five laps to go. Brandau looked low for the lead. Didn't quite have the momentum by the end of the straightaway, kind of ran out of steam. And so Zane still holds two seconds back to Simone and Orioli as uh, they exit turns three and four and head down to turn number five. Now, of course, the Praga chassis arriving in the USA en masse this year with Velocity Motorsport. I've been told it's IPK Praga Karting Daniel Sleever's birthday today. Well, can Marina Brandau uh, give him a, a big birthday present? The Sodi Manufacturing, Sodi USA car of uh, Zane Birds has a long look over his shoulder. Almost looking, uh, yeah, he's, he's looking more over his shoulder going up Scrapyard straight than he's looking ahead of him. But that, he's just looking to where, where can I cover off the move from Marina Brandau. We go into turn number 11. Sodi versus Praga. Jamaica versus Brazil. Boy versus girl here in Micro Swift. And we come to the line, closing in on the final few laps in Micro Swift. Yeah, final few times around here. Just four more laps for Zane Burgess to continue what could be a banner year. Or for Marina Brandau to break out onto the scene as she takes the lead in turn five for the first time here. Marina Brandau, 
through turn number six. It would be a mega statement and a big uh, welcome home par or homecoming party here in the Velocity Racing Pits tonight if they're able uh, to get this young lady to the top step of the podium here in Micro Swift. Three and a half laps separate her uh, from victory right now as she leads us down the backstretch. Yeah, we are going the full race distance here in Micro Swift, and thank goodness we are. This has been an absolutely special kart race. We've had wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. We've had great slip streaming. We've had these youngsters using their heads. We've had tactics. We have had a flashpoint and an incident. Luckily, everyone's okay. And now we've got a head-to-head -head fight. I would say mano or mano, but it's not mano or mano. It's mano mano at the front of the field. Brandau has the lead. Burgess, the Winter Series champion, who's just been signed to a long-term contract by Sony Kart, who hope to take him up through the karting ranks, not here, not just here in the USA, but around the world. And we have got two future stars in the world of karting on our screens now. Yeah, Zane Burgess still keeping her just within arm's reach right now as they pop the curbing and head out of turn number nine. A little more narrow for Zane onto the back straightaway. Brand out a little wider arc. That's going to buy her enough real estate. She'll be safe uh, to turn number 10 from any potential passes, but uh, it's still close. And it's uh, almost three seconds now back to Leo Simone and Santiago Orioli, who I got to imagine at this point the adrenaline may have worn off just a little bit from that spike of uh, getting your head basically taken off uh, from behind. Santiago Orioli, Iron Man Award, no doubt. Here is the two to go signal flies, 16 down. Two laps and two drivers to settle it here in Micro Swift. Marina Brandau has been able to keep Zane Burgess just far enough behind her so that she doesn't have to defend. The minute she starts to defend, she'll slow herself down. She doesn't need to defend at the moment. Now, this is where drivers in the micro and mini classes, they need to be looking over their shoulder because they need to judge, uh, to judge when to defend and when not to defend. The problem is, though, is that Burgess, this is the type of thing that Dane Burgess really likes, where he's got to dig his heels in, get his elbows out, and tiger his way uh, up into the race lead. So, Brandau, a couple of car legs may not do it, because Burgess, Burgess could be the last of the late breakers. And he's closing in, coming through, turns 11 and 12. We're going to get one lap to go, and Burgess is in position to pounce. He's definitely got a big run here. Could even maybe send one in turn number one, but he'll think better of it and wait in line. Marina, just so much roll speed there on that Praga through turns one and two. Down to turn five, she leaves the door open though. It's an invitation and she's gonna close it off. Burgess, a nice arc to give him a run over to turn six. And again, Marina covers the inside there. Out of turn number six and over to seven. Brandau still kind of checking the gap back. Through the sweeper, she'll hug the inside. No change to turn eight here with half a lap to go. On to turn number nine, Burgess gets a nice wide entry. He's gonna have a good run up scrap yard straight. Brandau no, he's, knows he's there. She's not defending. She's going to need to defend. Here comes Burgess. Can he get that cart slowed down? Over, under, wheel to wheel. Burgess has got the inside line. Brandau has the outside line. It's going to be a last lap corner lunge if it's going to be anything. Out of the final turn, Brandau, not going to happen. Zane Burgess will continue the stunner if he can hang on. Look at Brandau. Big run down the straightaway. Burgess by just inches. 57 thousandths of a second, and Zane Burgess has the Sodi cheering section going wild here as he gets himself another <laughs> major micro victory in 2024. I can, I can well imagine that after the hugs and the celebrations die down, Zane's dad Kevin will go, you know man, don't be celebrating like that too soon. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's got to be careful about it there. That was uh, definitely a little bit too close to uh, relax on, but by uh, 57 thousandths of a second, Zane Burgess is your Micro Swift main event winner. Marina Brandau second. Leo Simone snags his first podium, and Trinity Carding Group will get another uh, piece of hardware with Santiago Orioli uh, hanging on. With, without a doubt, the yeah. Iron Man Award and just yep. probably uh, uh, thankful that we were able to have him finish and not another ambulance run. He ends up P4, Luca Becquerel fifth, Nachawadi, Wolf, 
uh, a good run on the, DD on the DDR entry. Then Godshock, Mulata, Marcelo Flores uh, into the t uh, top 10 there at the end. Hangs on uh, by the end of it all. And then here's a look further down the rest of a uh, pretty full finishing order for Mike Girlslift all the way down to Max Santana. Only one DNF or uh, out of it was Kaysen Sanders. Uh, I just want to check Kaysen. I mean, Kaysen, the, the short, the youngest drivers, he did 10 laps, a 104.6. And I, I, I just I just think that maybe uh, he didn't he went fast in the pre-final, that uh, maybe an 18-lap race for a driver so pint-sized at this stage in his career might have been a bit too much. There it is. There is the move. Wow. Uh, and I, you can see uh, on the shot there that there was a, a rather disappointed-looking uh, uh, Velocity Motorsport mechanic. They have nothing to be disappointed about. About. They're the newest team in the paddock, on the, uh, the only team running a Praga chassis, and they have been on the podium. And they're, you know, they're a team on the rise. And I'm sure they've got a star in Marina Brandao, but uh, the star of the moment, <laughs> he's about to speak to Alexander Searle as uh, he gets the balaclava off. And uh, yeah, Alex, you got to bend down for this one All right, because. Thank you guys. Uh, Micro Swift. Z he's Zane a little Burgess. man, but he's got a big future. It's Zane Burgess. Thank you, guys. Here with your winner in Micro Swift, Zane Burgess. Zane, I mean, we saw you pumping your fist in the air after crossing the line. What are your emotions? How does how good does this feel to win this race? Happy tears. Just happy. Of course you're going to be happy. I mean, that last lap, that incredible pass, I mean, how did you make it happen? Just working hard and just believing in myself. And one more thing, I mean, tell me, who would you like to thank for this victory? Juan, the team, my mechanic, Aleko, my dad, my mom. And that's really it, just the team. All right, thank you, buddy. Good luck and good job. Sorry, good job. Thanks. A uh, very happy Zane Burgess is your race winner here. The Jamaican sensation has got himself another one in 2024 x30 junior on the grid getting set to go green here in a few more moments as we are ready racing here to conclude the afternoon for the semi-pro classes the one minute marker will go up and the engines will fire let's take a look at how they will line up for our fourth uh, group here on the grid uh, we have of course the masters divisions to follow then mini swift and then it'll be time to get to qualifying and pre-finals for pro x30 and Pro Shifter. First up here on the starting grid for your X30 juniors, Diego Ardiles and Victor De Alencar make it a Rollison Performance Group lockout of the front row. Sarah Bradley uh, will roll off on the inside of row two in third on the Speed Concepts Racing Red Speed alongside Edward Kennedy in the Energy Course of Racing America's number 715. Then it's Tristan Murphy and Jackson Wolney on uh, row three. Cole Medeiros and Alexander Vanchev on row number four. David Ramirez rolls off on the inside of row five alongside Ty Fisher who's looking for a little more luck than what he saw in that KA Junior main. Then is Jun Hao Chang and the super tuned Tony Card on the inside of row six alongside Alan Bonilla. And further back outside your top 10, we'll get to a few more big names like, uh, well, Jose Alondro Halfen on the RPG. Cosmic starts on the inside of row seven, but Nathan Dupuy uh, has some work to do in the super tuned Tony Card there. Uh, in uh, 14th. Max Mo Karam and Edgar Rodriguez back on row eight. And then uh, we get to Major McCoskis. And then it's Mad Max Weiland, Chase Gassiet Lee, and Turner Brown. Uh, the final three were all well inside the top 10 in the pre final. Gassiet Lee and Turner Brown were battling inside the top five for the lead and the win uh, before crashing out. Mateus Tramalo is a scratch, I believe, this weekend. I think that puts us right at 20 for X30 Junior, but Diego Ardiles uh, won out in the pre-final. He's been uh, the kid to beat so far. Rollins and Performance Group has kind of produced over the last two seasons uh, a driver to beat in the junior classes. Last year was Ernesto Rivera. The year before, Caleb Gaffera. One new one rises up from uh, uh, the uh, previous year of getting closer and to make the next year uh, their dominant run. Diego Ardiles had some great runs throughout 2023 but nothing like the speed and uh, race wins he's already put together here in the first two and a half months of 2024. He's looking for another one here as he leads us to green in a few moments, Henry. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the, uh, the battle between row 10, Chase Gassiotli and Turner Brown. They clashed in the pre-final, but if they want to make progress, they're going to have to work together in this race. How 
things change in just a few short hours. Uh, Chase Gassioli obviously already riding a high of mentally, having passed over 30 drivers uh, in uh, the KA Junior race. And uh, they're running single file. They're not going to break out the two by two until uh, the very end. That's something new. Normally we see the drivers in formation a bit earlier than this, Sander. Yeah, I mean, some of it could be that the track, uh, you know, getting more and more of uh, the marbles off the circuit. A lot of it also, they have that Very luxury true. that they can take their time being only 10 rows deep instead of some of the classes like K.A. Junior <laughs> at 15 uh, uh, rows deep, or no, much further, sorry, 25. 25 rows deep. Couldn't do yeah. math for a second, 25 rows deep. So a lot more rows to form at the back. This one, a lot easier to bring together. So uh, the two teammates at the front make a uh, purple and pink lockout. It's Ardiles on the left in the white suit, Victor De Allen car on the right in the black suit. Here we go, boys and girls, X30 Junior action underway down to turn number one. Bradley gonna get a good launch there on the inside and the rest of the field trying to quickly get down into position through turns three and four as they rocket down to turn five. Yes, yeah, Sarah Bradley, her best national result so far. She was second in the 2023 round of the, of the Scusa Winter Series. Hasn't had a pro to a podium. It's a good start for Bradley. A long way to go, however. Um, but with the Allen car down to third over the curbs, and then the uh, Super Tube car of Tristan Murphy, well placed in fourth. Yeah, Tristan Murphy there still looking on. What a great start for the Ryan Perry Motorsport uh, driver of Tristan Murphy as uh, he heads uh, just about three cars back from Victor Day Allen car through the S's and out of the front stretch. We'll put one complete. Sarah Bradley trying to stay close uh, to the leader in the middle of an RPG sandwich as we cross the line. One lap down, 19 laps to go. Diego Ardiles is your leader. And at the end of the first lap, Chico is up to 11th. Uh, Chase Cassiot leaves up to 18th. And uh, from the back as well for uh, Mad Max Weiland. He didn't pick up anything, unfortunately, but a good start for Mateus Romalo. He was on the grid. And so he's up four. But Turner Brown up nine spots on the opening lap, Henry. Yeah, and, and of course, you know, Turner Brown, he, he, he was riding this wave of momentum. And suddenly there's a move. D Sarah Bradley into top spot. So Turner Brown, he's different ke kettle of fish oh. altogether. But uh, we'll battle for the lead. We'll talk about the leaders. And we'll wait to see if Brown catches them. But uh, Bradley's lead lasted about two corners. Diego Ardiles takes... Back top spot, Victor the Allen car trying to make it a RPG 1-2, but can't. Sarah Bradley still right on the bumper of Diego Ardiles as they go down through turns one and two. Uh, in her interview earlier, she said, I just need to work you know, on my racecraft a little bit, making less mistakes, being more consistent. Well, she's doing everything she can right now to stay where she's at or go a little bit better right behind Ardiles. And what a return for Jackson Wolney. I mean, he spun uh, with a big blunder battling for the lead in the pre-final he's back in the mix here he already drove it back up to six after penalties but uh, he is right there at the end and it's a now evenly weighted uh, slugfest two SCR red speeds two RPG cosmics and a little gap back to the uh, super tune Tony cart of Tristan Murphy yeah all day we've been speaking about how there's been just one single speed concept driver battling against a whole squadron of Rollinson Performance Group entries and now in the main event we finally got it equalized. The two Speed Concepts cards are battling with the two remaining front runners although RPG have got a whole more uh, host of, of drivers in this race but, race, but uh, they're all further back but the Allen Kart the inside of Bradley now we can see some team tactics because the two RPG teammates are together and the two Speed Concept cards are together and uh, may the best team win. Yeah, what, what a uh, uh, good uh, storyline we've got brewing here in X30 Junior. Now, uh, credit where credit's due to Diego Ardila's team or not, he has been uh, exceptional. And now he's got a teammate at least to fight with uh, up front. He did have five earlier in the pre-final or four around him. He's just got one for now. Victor De Allencar leads him, but don't count out uh, some of his teammates like Cole Medeiros or Turner Brown to get there. They're seventh and eighth. I think Brown may have already gotten around Medeiros. So across the line, here's your top four uh, with De Allencar leading his first laps of the main. Ardiles to Wol uh, Bradley and Wolney Murphy. Vanchev sits about another half second back uh, from Murphy and he's closing in and Turner Brown is the next up. He's gone from dead last in 20th 
to seven. 13 spots gained here over the first four laps. Yes, indeed. Uh, he is ahead of uh, Fisher in eighth, Medeiros in ninth, Riverboat Hetz, Edward Kennedy in t uh, tenth. Uh, looks like uh, uh, Alejandro Halfen uh, has had to retire. Or, no, he's still out there. All 21 drivers still starting. And Nathan Dupuy is uh, down into 50. Is down in 15th position. Chase Cassioli is up to 12th. So he's not making quite as much uh, rapid progress as Brown, but he is plugging away and picking carts off methodically one by one. Yeah, just slowly but surely working his way up the boards. He'll pick up another one as he and Vanchev get by on Tristan Murphy. Now the hard work begins. They've got really just, uh, you know, he can get around Vanchev if he wants to for the fifth spot, but then it's this pack that's kind of running single file, uh, and I don't know if they're going to really trade spots all too much here over the next 10 to 12 laps. They may just be content to ride as is here, Henry. Well, I mean, that, that's a, a distinct possibility because you've got two sets of teammates working together. You know, if... Sarah Bradley can potentially pass Diego Ardiles, she will, but I don't think you're going to see Ardiles going for a move on to Alan Carr or Waldy going for a move on Bradley unless the, the lead cart in each team duo makes a mistake or suddenly the setup goes away drastically. Here's a look further back. There's Kennedy being passed by Fisher, and uh, behind them the 7 6 four of uh, you know an unsung hero in this race so far we haven't mentioned much edgar rodriguez making a move and uh, there is more moves going on that's the 713 so that's the first glimpse of chase Cassio Lee. the nash motorsport group he picks off one and picks off another and he's at the end of the turn around who i can do just as well yeah, so he and Ty Fisher now are nose to tail. That is going to be eighth and ninth on the racetrack. Brown's already pulled away from Vanchev, then Murphy, then you go back to Fisher and Gassio Lee uh, coming out of turns eight and nine down the back stretch. Still lots of racing left, 14 laps to go, and while well, he went backwards, well, we did have a change in the lead. Victor de Allencar unfortunately went backwards. He's dropped to second. Ardiles to the point, and Gassio Lee got around Ty Fisher. Move him up into the eighth spot now from the back took him a little bit longer than Turner Brown, but you'll have that when they start on the same row. One guy gets the inside and picks up five spots. The other guy on the outside, he'll lose maybe one or two off the start. Well, I'm so glad I just spent some, oh, oh, yellow flags waving down at turn number five. Can't see an incident. There may be a problem in turn number six. The carts are all single file. Ah, uh, yes, we see a driver sat on the barriers there. So we have had our first retirement. Oh, and it's the... Uh, the Taiwanese driver, Chinese Taipei, the island of Taiwan, Zhao Hao Chang in the number seven, uh, Jun Hao Chang in the uh, 728 Super Tune cart there. Oh, Nakamori-san, his driver coach will be upset there. But of course, we can go again tomorrow. And uh, there's another move, that is Fernandez, uh, Rodriguez rather, up another place. Yeah, that was him getting around Ty Fisher. They're battling back for ninth. It's allowed Chase Cassie at lead to move up the boards a little bit. Update on Turner Brown. He has put down the fastest lap of the race, multiple laps over. He's two to three tenths a lap faster than the leaders by himself right now. Well, they're just on cruise control out front, taking care of their tires. He is pushing that RPG Cosmic to go forward, and he doesn't have any advantage. You think sometimes here is Nathan Dupuis gets into the side a little bit of Ty Fisher working by, and Edward Kennedy gets there, but sometimes an early crash, an early exit of the pre-final can be a bit of a godsend if you get a good start in the main because you've got all those laps left still on the tires that you didn't run. Well, Brown ran all of the pre-final minus the last three corners. Yeah. He's got no extra edge, neither does Chase Gassiot Lee. They are just tearing up this field right now, and Turner Brown especially is hunting down oh. the top four as a Big curb pop there from De Allencar. Yeah, he got that cart sideways, at not in the right way either, but was able to hold on. I mean, he looks down, almost checked to see if, if, if somebody bent something as he clattered into the curb at a wrong angle. And of course, don't forget, these drivers in a Junior X City, they're doing, you know, 70 miles an hour as they aim these carts at the concrete curbs. So, you know, if you do hit a wrong angle, you can, you know, bend a track rod, bend a, a caster yoke. 
things like that. It's, uh, um, you know, so you can see Alan Kite sort of quick glance down there at the, uh, the uh, right front corner of his cart to make sure uh, everything is in order. And I tell you what, everything is going to need to be in order with all four of our leaders because they're about to have to contend with it be wild Turner Brown. Yeah, Turner Brown. Uh, only uh, about a second and a half away from getting the toe off the back of Jackson Wolney. And we're only just now getting to halfway. Needs that pace to continue, but he could get there. 10 down, 10 to go. Diego Ardiles still leading the way over to Allen Carr, Bradley, and Wolney. That time by Brown, he was half a second faster than the leader. And I think that's why we're seeing a change. Day Allen Carr now back to the point out of turn number five. Ardiles tucking back in in second. And uh, we'll see if uh, uh, Turner's able to drive back away from them, but I have a feeling when he gets there, if that pace continues, someone's going to step up to the plate and be able to run with them. I think they're all just going to the limit of the drivers around them right now, knowing that they want to save a little bit of tire and a little bit of equipment for the finish. And I tell you what, they're all starting to look over their shoulders now as well, and they all would have seen that driver there. The 7 6 8 of Turner Brown, and they all thought, Oh my, what not need the back? Oh dear, we're only, got, we're only on lap 11 as well. Oh, we thought the hard work had been done. They got him out of the way in the pre final. Eh, eh, nope, he is not done with this one yet, is Turner Brown. There's a huge gap, four seconds, back to Alex Vonchev in sixth. And the next driver along is Chase Gassio Lee. Yeah, Chase Gassio Lee. Unfortunately, he's still got a little ways to even get to Alexander Vanchev. And Gassi at lead definitely has the speed to run with the leaders. He's not as blisteringly quick as Turner Brown, but he is most certainly fast. Uh, we also need to uh, uh, announce uh, over the paddock that unfortunately Junao Chang is getting checked out by the on-site medical team and that we do need his parents to please report uh, over to the scoring area. So that is all the way down uh, by turns uh, number five. Uh, the parents uh, or guardians of Junao Chang, please report to the timing and scoring area as uh, they are checking out that young man uh, moment or right now here while this race continues. Not serious enough that uh, they wanted to stop this race and uh, we are trying to do some good racing still here with the top four. I'm, I'm just wondering if uh, it's, it's, it's very hot, it's uh, very humid and I, I just wonder maybe if he's feeling a little bit under the weather and uh, maybe getting a little bit of treatment for uh, you know, some dehydration or something like that. Could be a mix of anything for sure. So any guardians of Junao Chang, please report to timing. But uh, look at this. We've all of a sudden got five carts we can fit into frame here in the lead pack. Turner Brown is there, about four car lengths back from Jackson Wolney and Sarah Bradley. Diego Ardila is still second. Uh, Victor de Allencar leads. And Bradley with the first mistake she's had in a little while as she lost some time. So did Wolney to the top two coming out of 10. And Turner Brown's going to get another one. He goes to fourth, gets around Jackson Wolney. What an impressive drive for the uh, 768 of Chico Brown uh, from last to P4 with still seven to go. Yeah, and of course, Brown has to do that. He cannot afford to sit behind. He is traveling so much quicker than the top four drivers. When he catches them, he has to make the move to stop him losing the momentum. He is in such a rhythm. Now, he is absolutely, his eyes will be out on stalk, sensory overload, as he is just, you know, at one with the machine, and he cannot afford, it's like the other carts, so when you're in that zone, as a driver's hand, and you'll know this, it's almost like does it cart, other carts don't exist. Well, I tell you one cart that does exist, Diego Ardiles exists, because he's just taken the lead from Victor de Alencar, but Brown has to just... Pick him up and put him down as he catches them so he's not knocked out of the ultra, ultra focused concentration zone that he is in now. The only unfortunate part of this entire scenario is that Turner Brown, well, he has enough time to catch the leaders by the time he gets to the lead, if he can get all the way there, which I think he's got the speed to do so. It'll be two, three laps to go. He won't be able to drive away from them. He'll have to get to the lead, and then they're going to instantly start passing him back, and it'll just become a, a uh, you know pass and block fest at the front of the field. They'll start battling, and the ability that he might have had earlier on with how much speed he had to drive away, that'll be gone as he goes by Sarah Bradley, and he's just making it look so easy here, Henry. 
He is, you know, that is, you say you, you say that he's only, he might catch him with two or three to go. He might take, he, he's only going to need two or three corners because he has not waited for one moment. It is just like, it's automatic. He's on autopilot right now, is Turner Brown. And teammates or not, he can't just sit behind his two teammates. The rhythm that he's in, the zone he's in, he will have to go for a move on his teammates when he catches them. Not if, but when. So Chico even closer now, a car length away from uh, his two uh, new teammates in Victor de Alencar and uh, Diego Ardiles. Victor de Alencar had never won an X30 Junior Main here uh, before this weekend. Could today be the day for him to maybe pull one off? Or could Diego Ardiles keep that momentum going from the Winter Series and uh, capitalize it to start his Pro Tour campaign? This time by, it'll be four laps to go. When do the three RPG drivers want to battle? And while Brown has tracked them all down, Sarah Bradley, Jackson Wolney even, not too far back to make some noise and mix things up once the passing starts. Okay, I saw Brown look over his shoulder. He's been sitting behind our dealers in the Allen car. If he's not careful, that momentum that he's riding will go and he'll have to just sit and wait for a, maybe a last lap shuffle or something like that. Now the Allen car goes for the race lead. Okay, game on at the front. The teammates, they're one, two, three. They played nice so far. Turner Brown up into P2. And uh, that was because uh, our dealers in the Allen car was battling. Watch out coming into turn number nine. Here comes Brown now. Takes the lead and he's gone from attack to defence, Ardiles looks across at him and now Ardiles gets the lead back and the Allen car moves into second place and here comes Bradley. Bradley almost got around Brown, couldn't quite do it. Now Jackson Wolney gets close, this time by. Three laps to go, Ardiles fending off every charge left and right. He knew how far back Turner Brown started. He said, if you caught me from that far back, well, I need to go ahead and send you back that way by passing you at the first opportunity. He did exactly that, brought the Allen car with him. Now we'll start defending a little bit. Center track for the race leader through turns five and, tur and turn number six. And Brown almost there on the Allen car, just couldn't quite do it. That's the first move that Turner Brown has made all day that hasn't worked. And uh, it's come at potentially the worst possible moment. So he makes amends up the inside into turn number nine. OK, we've had tactics. We've had teamwork. It all goes out the window now. This is going to be a five-car bun fight for a $1,000 and the win in Junior X30 on the Pro Tour. Yeah, not, well, not, not this one. They're just under the minimum class requirement uh, oh. to get the money for them. Uh, the rest of the 100cc and the mini and micro classes will. The master's classes also, they, don't, they were just under the total turnout of what they needed. But nonetheless, it's still a Pro Tour uh, win, and it could lead them to a championship that funds the next Pro Tour season and guarantees them an entry into Scusa Super Nationals uh, in Las Vegas later this year. But for Turner Brown, it's about the win. It's about this moment right here, this historic drive, uh, one of the better ones I've seen from this young man to go from last all the way through the grid. And now, with a lap and a half to go, the only driver in his sights is the only one that seemed to maybe hold a candle to him in Homestead, Miami, and uh, battle. They've already danced a couple times this year. It's about time to do it again, and Victor de Car says, I want to get in on some of that action. Through the S's, white flag waving this time by. Turner Brown trying to mount one last charge. Does he have enough tire? Does he have enough left in the tank? With one lap to go to catch Diego Ardiles. Into turn number one, Turner Brown. He knows he needs to make one move and one move only. And now our dealers defense. Both the Alan Carr and Brown get a good run out of turn number five. And Will Brown looks to the inside of he looks, but our dealers defense. The Alan Carr is there as well. That's cost Brown a bit of momentum. Watch him to turn nine, Xander. That's where Brown has made a couple of really good moves. Is he close enough? No, because uh, uh, Diles is defending, but he's going to get a run up the inside into turn 10. Well, he popped the inside curb. That hurt him a little bit, but the Allen car pushed him, and now blocking low on the inside is Ardiles. Way low. Brown is trapped. He's on the outside. All that hard work to get there. Now, the Allen car to second. What can the last corner do? They're all in the bumper. 
Everybody goes wide. Sarah Bradley to third as Brown hits the wall. Diego Ardiles at the line, wins the main, and Turner Brown into the barriers as the front tire got trapped behind the bumper or the bumper behind the tire on the last lap, on the last corner. He drove his absolute heart out to go from last to the lead in second and in the last turn, running third behind his two teammates. Just a little bit too much pushing and shoving. And Chico, unfortunately, has to watch this one uh, while the rest of the field goes on by. But Sarah Bradley played that one smart, and she gets her first career Scusa Pro Tour podium. Wow. What a race. We marked Sarah Bradley out as a potential breakout star. The boys in the pit spoke to her yesterday about what it would be like to get that podium, and she's done it. I have to say, though, that uh, Turner Brown, um, you, you know, we'll, we'll look back at the last corners. That young man did not does not deserve to be sat on the barriers there. That was an amazing drive. Another amazing drive. Do you know the first driver that finished out of the league group? Chase Gassio Lee. 20th to 5th. In the end, Alexander Bonchev in fourth, Nathan in sixth, Nathan Dupuy seventh, Major Makovskis in eighth, Tristan Murphy was ninth. It could have been a one, two, three for RPGs, a one, two with Bradley in third. And uh, there was a camera shot uh, as the celebrations continue in the scale area. There was a camera shot of Turner Brown sat on the barriers, head in hands from elation to dejection. But what a race, and Caleb Vieska is getting ready to speak to a relieved Diego Ardiles. Thank you guys, Diego Ardiles, your Saturday X30 Junior winner. How does that feel? Feels very, very good. Yeah, just walk me through that race, right? It seems like Turner was closing down that gap. You were fighting there with uh, Victor and Sarah Bradley as well, side by side a little bit. Uh, you know, how was it having all those teammates there, you know, three RPGs up top and fighting for the race win? Yeah, it was nice. At the beginning, like, I wanted to lead, then Victor went by, and then I passed him back because I, I thought, like, me leading the pack, we were, we were faster and we were pulling more. But at the end, I, th I think it was the same, so I pushed him in the end. I made a move because I see that Turner was coming. And yeah, last two laps I defended and I took the win. Sounds good. Well, there you guys have it. Diego Ardiles, your X30 junior winner. Thank you to uh, Caleb and Diego Ardiles. There is the uh, title sponsor. Well, I've got to say, Chase Garcia Lee has given uh, Coastal Metal Roofing Sales Inc and Coastal Inc. Printing some great coverage because they have come on board as the title sponsor for the Nash Motorsport team and also uh, helping to partner some of our coverage as well. So we do uh, send our appreciation to uh, Coastal Inc. And uh, like I said, the new graphic kit for Nash Motorsport look really good. And uh, oh, oh yeah, speaking of Coastal Inc., well, he almost went coast to coast from back to front. Chase Cassio Lee. Don't forget just his second season of karting. Uh, and that is a heck of a drive for that young man. And uh, I'm just w wondering there. He's a uh, see, Of course, you've got to go through the uh, the way bridge. You've got to go through the, uh, uh, the nose cone check, the front bumper pushback check. And uh, I say with with uh, Caleb Vieska, and uh, we're going to wait to go over the scales. Is he underweight? Did, did that trip to the bathroom just before the race cost him? No, he's fine. <laughs> and uh, I know Mum Michelle will be very, very, very pleased with that because uh, um, I think there are, there are, there'll be some tears of joy now because at the end of the uh, last two races where Chase got taken out or got involved in incidents within sight of the checkered flag, there was a few tears of another kind. But we are back. Here we go then. This is the mixed grid of Master Shifter and KA100 
McMaster and they're on their rolling lap. Don't forget, it's going to be a standing start for the shifters and behind them, the Masters will be doing a rolling start. The Scooter officials did a fantastic job of coordinating it in the pre-final. Wonder uh, what will happen here. Now, obviously, Mario Barrios is not out there, so the pre-race favourite in KA100 Master. Uh, we do wish Mario well. He has gone to a local medical facility uh, with some rib and some shoulder injuries and some back pain. But, uh, you know, that is simply an opportunity for the rest of the field. Here is your starting lineup in Pro Shift to the 600 numbers. Skitchy Barnes and Joe Rooch on row, row Rook on Joe row number one. Juan Pablo Rico and Ken Chilling, row two. Fabio Mendonca and Luis A. Canones on row three. Joao Carlos Fregonzani and uh, Just Lewis Canoni. And next, then Michael Gauche, who crashed out of the lead in the pre final. Then it's Jacob Neary and Ruben Ravello in Masters, followed by Diego Rodriguez, Alfonso Santiago, Tom Gerstner, Michelle Garrido, and Charlie Fonseca. They are your starting lineup. Now, very quickly, and we're waiting for one driver, they're hurrying him up, hurrying him up, hurrying up. That is the, oh, it's the breaklet. Oh, he, he slots into line. That's the third row of the grid. Now, the flag, the back of the grid is set. They're gonna wait and hold them for the KA Masters to come round and get a little bit closer, because that means that the pro shifters won't be uh, lapping them quite as quickly. Now the lights are out. Now we're off and racing, and it's a great start. Oh, they all go over the curb. While Skitchy Barnes, so I fancy a bit of going over the curb. And Joe Rook, well, well, if you can do that, I can do that. And it's a Rook who takes the lead after an exclusion in qualifying. Skitchy is second, and the rest of the field coming around there. And uh, the Masters race, the Masters race gets underway behind them. There's the 445 cart of a uh, new pole sitter, uh, Jakob Neary. Uh, Jacob Neary, who has the race lead. Yeah, so now I think we've got a much more open uh, KA Masters main, and the two fastest guys in Master Shifter close together with Joe Ruck and Skitchy Barnes. And again, Ruck getting the jump on him. They were relatively even in pace. Ruck did track him down a little bit through that pre-final as they were working through traffic at the end. But for the first time all weekend, uh, they're around each other uh, in a race scenario. So let's see what they really look like. And if they start to dance, it's behind. Nice pass for fourth. That was Michael Guash, I believe, yeah. trying to go down the inside of Luis Aikinones. Remember, Guash led the opening lap and then ended up in the wall in turn one on lap two of the pre-final. So, uh, oh, now there's the move. Skitchy Barnes back to top spot. But they both, both Barnes and Rook are going to have to deal with Guash before long because, of course, he was leading, so you know he's quick before he crashed. But his tyres and tyre wear in this class, in this semi pro division, are uh, critical. And, of course, he's got much fresher bones. And you can see the third of the red and yellow Marinello carts. Uh, Guash is making good use of those fresher tyres. Yeah, so uh, now as they uh, cross the line, Joe Ruck uh, right behind, uh, or, or right out in, uh, yeah, right behind the Skitchy Barnes. There's another pass for Michael Bosch. He gets through, new, lead, uh, new driver into third. It's Marinello, one, two, three, headed down to turn number five. Meanwhile, Jakob Neary continues to lead the way in KA Masters. Mini Swift is up on deck. That'll be the next one to roll, folks, before the semi-pro show ends, and the pro show gets underway so we're about midway through one and a half main events that remain on the semi-pro round number one yes indeed up scrap yard straight come the three leaders skitchy barnes from bermuda leads joe rook the driver of cart number 653 from frankfort in kentucky and then third position closing in is michael gouache and uh, Michael, the driver from uh, Martinez. Uh, and uh, in fourth position, you have Juan Pablo uh, Rico uh, uh, in the U Race Sodi cart. And it wasn't so Juan Pablo Rico, he took fourth place after the incident between uh, Freganese and uh, Luis A. Aquinones uh, on the final lap of the pre final. But now Rook coming back 
at Skitchy Barnes a little bit. But Gouache, and I've got to say Rico closing in as well. Behind them, it's Ken Schilling on the GP Factory Fury racing entry. Then the factory cart of Lewis A. Canones, just Lewis Canones in cart number 629 for LFB Racing is next. I've got to say the master shift of feel still very closely packed. Uh, four seconds covering the eight remaining contenders. Uh, we did have 10 at the start of uh, the event. Uh, obviously, Brian Chatfield has uh, withdrawn. And I'm looking down there. Well, no, this, uh, unfortunately, Fabio Mendonca, the driver that you saw coming late to the grid in the uh, cart for us entry, he has fallen away and I have a feeling that uh, after getting to the grid late all is not well with the number 615 Birrell ART. Let's go down uh, while the battling on the racetrack continues here. Oh wait, uh, we'll uh, continue uh, to go. We, we will be chatting I believe soon with some of uh, uh, the more drivers here falling out from the X30 Junior class and continuing to watch uh, the many Swift drivers making their way to grid. Uh, but for now, here in Master Shifter, what a run down to turn number one here for Skitchy. Back to uh, Rook, back to uh, Guash, and even close there for Juan Pablo Rico. Uh, I mean, he has uh, really turned up his pace here in this main event. That's impressive to see. And over K Masters, well, that one's a little more spread, but not too far as we got oh. problems for Luis A. Canones, unfortunately. Yep, the factory cart entry out of the race and we have a change up front as they begin to uh, oh no sorry skitchy bar going to change the second uh, i was saying the tail enders of the k masters race you've got uh, michelle garrido then you've got the 410 cart of alfonso santiago and the ageless wonder uh, tom gerstner they are all battling less than a second apart. And as the camera goes up the straight, uh, we'll see probably coming into the frame uh, those three. There they are, just flashing across the top of our screen there. There are three KA Masters drivers about to be swamped by our four leading master shifters. And Zander, I don't know about you, but this for me is one of the most interesting, enjoyable passes, parts of the race. How do these masters, some of the most experienced men in the, in the Scusa Paddock deal with split class, slower racing? Yeah, I mean, these, these guys have driven go-karts for, and, and for a lot of them race cars, right? You talk to uh, a, a, any of them. We look at the KA Masters field down to the Master Shifter field, all kinds of experience. Uh, how good can they get through traffic? I can tell you one guy that's got a lot of experience in it is Mr. Michael Gouache. He was uh, uh, featured, if any of you saw the, the movie on Netflix, The Gentleman Driver. He raced over in the European Le Mans series yes. for many years. Oh, oh, no. Oh, right on cue. Michael Gouache in one of the KAs. Ruben, Ru or no, Michelle Garrido. Garrido is involved. And Michael Gouache colliding on the front straightaway. Gouache out of a podium spot. Garrido battling for a podium spot, and he's out as well. And it just looked as though, uh, as they were coming out of the final corner, Garrido was moving over to the left-hand side of the track, which would be his normal racing line. And uh, that was where, and now, so they're tiptoeing past. Though so that's the leaders. They're the top two drivers uh, in uh, Masters. Yeah, so, oh and no! That, that yeah, was, that there's, was a replay. there's the replay. And it was yeah, it was uh, it was Garrido moving but to it, the outside. It, it looked like Gouache he was, was already on. spinning though when he when they came out of the straightaway before Guash even got to him. To be honest, oh maybe we'll have a. a I, I don't think Guash got in. I think Guash. I think Garrido had already gotten hit, and spun, coming out of the front straightaway. So if we could pull that again and start it a little bit sooner, or I think it slow might show something a little bit different. So. Oh, still now a little bit too late, unfortunately. But you can see, I mean, the way uh, Garrido was already facing backwards when Gwash got into him is this is a battle for the lead. Jakob Neri uh, still battling with Charlie Fonseca. This is for the race win right here in KA Masters. Uh, Zanella Racing's Charlie Fonseca getting around Jakob Neri. And without the uh, uh, the leading man, Mario Parios, on the racetrack, it has come into a whole new field for this one. Check out this battle as well now. This is for the fourth spot. Canones versus Ken Schilling. So they're battling it out there uh, for the fourth position in Master Shifter. But eight laps complete. 
as uh, the field uh, works its way out of the final turn. Now nine complete work in 10 uh, for, uh, or work, uh, working for Skitchy Barn. He's got seven tenths back to Joe Ruck, who has closed up a little bit in traffic. Through turns three and four, over to five for this battle for the lead in KA Masters. Third and fourth, not too far back in Diego Rodriguez and Ruben Ravello, only about maybe a second and a half away from the fight for the lead and the win in that class as we approach the halfway mark with Skitchy Barnes from Bermuda continuing to show the lead. Yes, indeed, and the KA Masters lead battle. These two drivers, they are two seconds in front of Rovella, who has no gap uh, between him and his Alessandros racing teammate, uh, the number 426 car, Diego Rodriguez. So the front four in KA Masters on your screens there. Half a second separates Barnes and Rook. Juan Pablo Rico, I think Juan Pablo Rico, he was just behind that incident uh, between Garrido and Rook. And that's obviously delayed him a little bit and he hasn't been able to catch back up. Just Luis Quinones is five seconds back from those three in fourth position. K uh, Ken Schilling, uh, a second back uh, again from Quinones in fifth. And then, uh, well, Mendonca is still out there. But he he's in danger of being lapped even though he's in the same class as the uh, rest of the ship has obviously been as a problem with that cart and I'm looking down well Tom Gerstner is still within striking distance of the number 410 cart Alfonso Santiago and they are about six or seven seconds behind the two Alessandros racing carts so six carts remain in Masters and six carts remain in Shifter and uh, Joe Ruck to Skitchy Barnes hasn't changed all too much. I mean, was seven tenths about two laps ago. It's down to about six. We'll have to probably wait to see when they catch traffic again for when the gap may close back down for the race lead. The last time by lap time wise, Barnes had him by about a quarter tenth. So uh, pretty evenly matched Baronello uh, Cart USA drivers, Joe Ruck and Skitchy Barnes. And, you heard from Skitchy earlier, managing the traffic, not making any mistakes. That'll be the key to success and victory here in uh, Shifter Master around this place. And he's still got a little ways to go uh, while uh, they head out of the front stretch. Here's the, the KA Masters fight for the lead and the win. Fonseca last time by, lap time wise compared to Jakob Neri. Uh, he was a little bit, uh, little bit faster, about a tenth better than Neri on the AEM carding uh, EOS card. Yes, indeed. And, uh Still got plenty of time remaining for the two, the two remaining Maranello racing car entries, Jerry White and crew, uh, and the rest of the Maranello kart team looking at uh, a one-two lockout. It could have been a one-two-three had it not been for that incident between Rook. Now we saw, we saw Gouache rather sort of shaking his fist at that, but I think that might have been a little bit of frustration uh, because uh, there was already a problem happening in front of him. Now, who's that standing next to their go-kart? Uh, oh, dear. Is that the... Oh, we'll have to have a little check there. Who, that, uh, that, ah, is that, that could be um, uh, Garrido, possibly. I don't know. He, did he get back in the race? As, uh, yeah, I think that is. I think that is Garrido. I think he got his cart back fired up. Looks like he's probably just going to drive it into the pit lane. I think. I'm pretty sure that was Garrido that they just got around. Well, uh, or, or no, there's a driver. St uh, there's a driver standing in the middle of the track. Oh, uh, it, uh, it, it looked. Oh, uh, that, that would have been Ken Schilling uh, yeah. in the factory fury thing. We'll have a check next time around. That'd be a great shame of uh, Ken, who is up was up into the top five. But uh, here we go, Joe Rook now begins to close in as a whole hold your breath under but in front of the two leaders we've got traffic coming up again we said that the the, the masters cards would probably be lapped twice in the final and uh, oh now just as root catches barnes they're both gonna have to negotiate some of the masters KA Masters. And that's why Joe's going to go now or try to. Skitchy oh. closing the door on the outside there in Master Shifter. So he holds him back, buys himself a little bit of real estate, and that's going to be well uh, needed to hopefully get through this traffic because the next group of guys, do they know that he's coming here? He'll be the first one to get through them again. First up on the chopping block is Tom Gerstner. That'll be easy. Down the backstretch, straight line. Both of them get around him, no problem. 
Barnes is going to catch some of these guys potentially in the S's up here. So that might get a little tight. No, I don't think he'll get them there, but he, if he can't get around them on the front straight away, it could get tricky uh, going through turns one and two and slow him back down again. Next in line is Afonso Santiago for the Orsalon Racing Team. And just in front of Santiago uh, looks to be, oh, as Gerstner pulled in, I, I, I think he may have come in at the last race, and it's getting out of the Whoa. way. Uh, that, I think, was, oh, was Schilling, well, that was Mendonca getting out of the way. Uh, so the other shift, the driver's gone a lap down. And I suppose, I do hope that uh, Tom Gerstner hasn't come in to the pits because he was doing so well chasing, chasing, chasing Santiago. We will see. Down the back stretch there, Joe Rook taking a look over to the left-hand side. Not sure what he was checking, but uh, the Marinello uh, uh, that he's on is uh, now about maybe a second away from the race lead. Is third place there. Juan Pablo Rico gets through some of the traffic. They're going to come to the line this time to put 16 laps complete. And I think Rook is starting to have some shifter linkage issues oh. while uh, this group is fighting for second and third. That's teammates, team owner and client, Diego Rodriguez and Ruben Ravello battling it out here for the uh, third spot, the final spot on the podium. And uh, we got one of the, sh uh, the leader oh, in Master no. Shifter arriving on this podium battle. And of course, uh, neither Alessandro, but there we go. And that's going to help Skitchy Barnes. Rook, sh uh, sh gear linkage issues or not. And I think Rook may, Rook may have gone. Rook may have gone. Oh, he's going to be caught. He's still out there. Potentially, uh, Rico is up in the second position. We'll wait. We'll wait. Yeah, Rook is in real trouble. And now, Juan Pablo Rico moves the U Race Sony card into second place. And Rook can't get up through the gears. It takes him a couple of stamps on the paddle, on the on the gear shifter, to get up through the gears. And you can't flag these two off. They're battling for a podium. And again, that's a good, good move there. You can see the hands are going out. So they know there's a faster car coming. Although, actually, Rook's not that much faster now. Yeah, and, and then not only Rook, uh, Luis A. Canones, it looked like he was messing with his shifter linkage as well earlier on that factory cart when he went out. So... Uh, just uh, an odd coincidence that both of uh, the two mechanicals and shifter, it seems so far, have been uh, forced to, to potentially uh, the shift lever. But nonetheless, uh, Rook is hanging on for dear life to keep that podium. He's got a big gap to Luis Quinones, uh, the 629 OTK, uh, if he can hang on for a few more laps. But he's going to lose a lot of time. As, check this out. Getting around the race later. Uh, the race two race leaders, Neri and Fonseca, is master shifter. Here's the fight for third as well. And oh, oh no. no! Off goes the left rear tire. That's what Ruck was looking at as well. The tire is off on Joe Ruck. And it has, uh, you can look at that. Great camera right there from Kart Chaser. You can see on the left rear hub, the all the, 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 the nuts and the bolts at the end have sheared off completely. So the, the, the wheel wasn't tightened and gradually the metal wore away and uh, there were suddenly no nuts on his rim. Well, that makes sense why he was checking the left side of his go-kart yep. going down the back straightaway about three, four laps ago. He felt that loose wheel coming, was hoping <laughs> he could light, and there he goes, sketchy looking. Is that my teammates right there? Yes. Unfortunately, it was. Congratulations, Luis Canones. You've now been promoted into a podium spot. Juan Pablo Rico uh, was already up into second, and he was close, but he got by Ruck, who was struggling earlier. And uh, whether it was the, the tire uh, throwing things, I can't imagine it, it would have been, well, it might have been two problems at the same time, but either way, we're on the last lap. Well, it is a, it's been a very long race at a very physically demanding circuit with a lot of grip, a lot of ambient heat, and a lot of curb usage. So uh, you combine all those factors together, and in this race, uh, the late, great Murray Walker said, and every time there was a big race of attrition in Formula 1, he said, the mice are getting at the machinery. And uh, certainly, someone took a nibble out of the, the, uh, the, the nuts on the end of uh, the left rear tyre of uh, uh, Mr. Rook's cart, sadly. Either way, uh, it at least will be one Marinello on the podium. Skitchy said in his interview yesterday that he was hoping to maybe make a one, two, three. It won't happen today, but he will be on the top step for round one of the Pro Tour and Master Shifter. It goes the way of Scott Skitchy Barnes in the 609 and behind. Where is your fight for the win? Here it is in K Master Charlie Fonseca. Uh, comes through the field in the pre-final and wins the main over Jakob Neri. 
then you go back to find uh, Diego Rodriguez and Ruben Ravello. Little gap to them, and it'll go Rodriguez, I believe. He gets the final spot on the podium. Ravello ends up fourth in K Master, and Luis Quinones will get third in Master Shifter over Ken Schilling. So remind me, did client or team boss uh, get the final podium for Alessandros Racing? Team boss. Team boss. <laughs> like, yeah. I know you pay me to drive for me, but I ain't giving you nothing for free on the track. <laughs> Not one bit. There. Oh, there is a uh -huh. look. You can see the tire was working its way off, working its way off, and then Joe was trying to get it over to the right-hand side of the oh. racetrack, and it spun around and nearly collected Luis Canones. Yes, indeed, and uh, I think here we go. Check oh. this out. You can see it just going, going, and there it goes. Going, going, and going. And instantly the corner marshal was right on it, uh, trying to go ahead and warn the rest of the drivers. So pretty heads up from him uh, on the <laughs> end of the day for Joe Ruck, unfortunately. Uh, that concludes it for him. So one more uh, quick commercial break will follow here. Here's the full unofficial results from Master Shifter and uh, uh, as well from KA100 Masters. We'll speak with them uh, if we do have time. Mini Swift is going up right next, and then it'll be time for the pros to take to the racetrack for qualifying for Pro X30 and Pro Shifter on the inaugural Scusa Pro Tour Pro Show. So don't go anywhere, folks. The racing continues live from Orlando. You're watching Kart Chaser, powered by Acceleration Kart Racing's coverage of the Supercarts USA Pro Tour. So you finally want to get behind the wheel, huh? Yeah, I've been shooting for three years, and I've never got to drive. Well, you're going to need some more gear than just your helmet. Why don't you go to shopakr.com? They got their inventory online, and they'll ship it the same day if you order before 5.30 p.m. Eastern. They got shoes? Yep. Gloves? Yep. Rip protectors? Got those too. Can they make me go fast? No. Here at Acceleration Kart Racing, we've got everything you need to get on track. What happens next? Well, that's on you. Check us out online at shopakr.com. Here at MPG Motorsports, our main goal is to provide the best pathway into professional motorsports for our entire team, drivers and mechanics alike. We're based out of Whiteland Raceway Park in Indiana. For more information, contact us at chase at mpg-motorsports.com. We're at a commercial break.
So you will finally want to get behind the wheel, huh? Yeah, I've been shooting for three years and I've never got to drive. Well, you're gonna need some more gear than just your helmet. Why don't you go to shopakr.com? They got their inventory online and they'll ship it the same day if you order before 5.30 p.m. Eastern. They got shoes? Yep. Gloves? Yep. Rip protectors? Got those too. Can they make me go fast? No. Here at Acceleration Kart Racing, we've got everything you need to get on track. What happens next? Well, that's on you. Check us out online at shopakr.com. Here at MPG Motorsports, our main goal is to provide the best pathway into professional motorsports for our entire team, drivers and mechanics alike. We're based out of Whiteland Raceway Park in Indiana. For more information, contact us at chase at mpg-motorsports.com. Studies show that even the best current generation of simulators only convince 50% of the human brain that they are real. Here at SimCraft, that just isn't realistic enough. Developed to offer the most realistic karting sim experience in the world, all testing has shown that the physics engine used in SimCraft's Grid 1 model convinces 90% of the human brain that you are actually on track. Now that is the real deal. Final semi-pro main event of the day. It is the Mini Swift Division. And so we've got 41 drivers on the lineup here. All of them chasing one kid in particular. <laughs> the uh, pole position motorsports Paralin of Alessandro Truchot. He starts on the pole alongside him, Lorenzo Varela, the Sony USA 164. Then it is a fellow Sony behind him on the inside of row two and Valentino Santian. And then the TKG Kart Republic of Josh Bergman. Nico Katowski and Nico Orbezo on row three. Ashton Wu and Marco Samet on row four. Alexis Bayarjan and Maxwell Macha, your top ten, Henry. Uh, then outside the top ten, uh, Supernats champion Royce Vega and Rocco Simone. Watch for Rocco. Then Troy Ferguson and Drew Jensen, Grayson Walcott and Geronimo Zuluaga. Then Luke Giglio and Achilles Siperko. John John McLean and Yago Lempen round out your top 20. You've got 20 more rows here and they're already filing up. So pick your favorite drivers, see where they're starting and get ready to watch them blast. 41 mini swifts are in the lanes and underway down to turn number one. Look around the outside. What a start for Lorenzo Varela. He'll get to the lead in turn number four. I was going to, oh, and Rocco Simone up over the back of Nico Katowski there, and they all sort themselves out. And there's a move from the Sony car of uh, Santillan trying to make a move, and he's having another little nibble. One driver that we haven't mentioned is a spin at the back of the pack, and there were carts heading straight towards him. Watch out for Mika Baruch, uh, who uh, uh, went out on the opening lap of the pre-final. He is on the Sony USA cart, one of the Sony USA carts. Watch out for Baruch charging up through the field. As uh, I was about to say, Zander, that in the, uh, our inaugural semi-pro show, the one thing we haven't had was a runaway final winner. Uh, and of course, thinking about True Show and how he dominated the pre-final, well, uh -uh, we're not going to have a runaway winner at all in this inaugural Scooza semi. 
Low show. Well, again, if we remember the pre-final lap time-wise, True Show by about lap five was even to the rest of the front runners. But the opening few laps when he got the lead in clean air, he was phenomenal. And already he's got a big run to Lorenzo Varela here for the lead. Won't go anything yet in turn number five, but he, he looked a lot more dominant uh -oh. than he was. Although right now, he's already going to get himself back to the lead in turn six. So this to me is the big question with no pressure from behind. Can Lorenzo Varela hold on to Alessandro Truchot's coattails in the first few laps of this main? Because I think if he can, I think he really does have a shot of hanging with him from lap six on. Yes, uh, as of course, Alessandro Truchot may of course make me eat a large slice of humble pie. Oh dear, and that is the 158, the 138, and I couldn't quite get the number there. That was Nicholas Orbezo and uh, Easton Kobinski. I couldn't quite see the third driver involved in that, but they all get back underway as, uh, yeah, uh, Truchot is not pulling away from uh, Varela. And look at Marco Samut and uh, Martino Santillon and Alexis Bayerjean closing in. So Bayerjean from Mont-Saint-Hilaire, or no, sorry, Le Pifani, in uh, Montreal, uh, the red and white Beryl Art PSL cart. Terrible start to the day down the slow group after problems in happy hour. And it's taken him all day, even a driver of Bayergeon's calibre, to get back up to the sharp end. And now he finally cracks the top five with Royce Vega, who's had a disappointing day so far. The Winter Series champion and Superlat champion, he finally gets together into sixth position. Yeah, uh, and uh, to be fair, I think he's doing it with a heavily pushed in front nose. Uh, might be able to get the penalty reversed uh, in, based on the start, but then when that bumper is dragging here, especially when you're landing, uh, it'll knock uh, the cart sideways. And when you go into the corner and you turn the front uh, and it starts to drag as well, it'll, it'll uh, struggle a bit. So Royce Vega, if that bumper is indeed pushed in on that Benick back in six, uh, to be running as good as he is lap time wise is impressive. Three laps complete here out of the 18. Varela's still hanging right on with Trucho, and uh, to his credit, uh, nobody's really that much faster or even to them. They're a tenth better than everybody else further back. The only driver that got a really good lap that time was Ashton Wound. He did go purple, but not by much, and again, a bit of a toe lap as well for the super tuned Paralin driver uh, in the 195. He's uh, just at the end of this pack right here as he heads onto the back stretch. He's in that bright red suit. Well, I mean, it's all down to the brand new crash helmet he's got on. I, I asked him, I said, does the helmet make you faster? And he went, yep, it's at least two tenths. <laughs> you know, joking around, but again, Ashton Moon, uh, another driver that, uh, uh, you know, Max Almach, uh, the, the, the reigning Microsoft champion, picked out as a potential winner, and he makes a move behind the number 140 of Josh Bergman, and they go, or, uh, Bergman goes past Nico Katowski, who is still having an excellent day for the U Race team. And uh, you just see U Race taking the podium in Master Shifter. And uh, yeah, uh, don't forget Nico and his brother Jake Katowski, they don't do club level racing. They just started doing national level racing. Your dad said, well, they may as well get thrown in the deep end and it's sink or swim. And I have to say that uh, maybe after last year, a little bit of doggy paddling, uh, now he's into a full front crawl. Definitely looking a little better, uh, even as the day goes on yes. for the Katowski brothers. So uh, in the top 10 safely, no one as fast as these two right now, though. Last time by, another 101 flat for Trucho and Varela. The only ones that can get a good lap similar to them are the ones that are in a really good toe. Vega is uh, maybe the closest at the moment, it looks like. He can match them uh, last time by. He's getting a little bit of help off the back of Valentino Santian. He's also pulled away from this group led by Alexis Bayarjan. And uh, seeing that, Josh Bergman's like, I gotta go. He'll take the inside away and get through in turn one, although Bayarjan. Uh, barely completes a crossover. Wasn't sure if he was going to get that done without contact. He did. And now pass for the third spot. That is Valentino Santian back around. Uh, fastest in Friday happy hour, Marco Sam. Now, I just, when, you look, when we look at Alexis Bayerjean's cart, the, the front nose of that Biroleati, it looks very high. And then the rear bumper looks very low. Now, if you look at that, yeah, there's the 140 cart. Oh, and there's uh, Ashton Moon, who says, oh, I want a closer look at this uh, rear bumper and front bumper as he goes past it. But it just strikes me as though, you know, a slightly odd looking set there. Front bumper very high, rear bumper very low. Although it probably isn't that much different to all the others. 
No, maybe not. I mean, I have seen in some uh, non-traditional setups on some go-karts to make them roll where you kind of, uh, as they call it, rake the setup, raise the front end ride height, drop the rear end ride height, uh, and, and for some it works. Alexis Byarjan obviously has that Bureau Lard up at the front. There's no other Bureau Lards we can really compare to. So uh, whatever they've figured out at PSL Card and to get that go-kart to roll, it's at least good enough to be in the top 10. May not be enough to challenge Trucho and Varela right now, but that's not saying uh, all too much bad about them because nobody else seems to be close. It's already two and a half seconds back to this group here and onward. Josh Bergman versus Ashton Wound. This is Santian, Samet, and Vega. They alone are two and a half seconds away from the leading duo. And uh, Vega to the inside of Samet. He'll take over fourth. Vega might be the third fastest guy on the racetrack right now, but he's still too far back to do anything and no one fast enough around him to try and hunt down the leaders. If anything, he, he may actually be second now. Look at the gap. If we go back to the leaders yeah. two this time by, we caught a glimpse of them. I think Trucho is steadily opening up the margin to Varela, proving me wrong. I thought if Varela could hang with them in the opening few laps, that uh, he'd be easily able to run the rest of the race. But Alessandro Trucho either matching or just barely eking out a couple hundreds per lap. It's up to almost half a second. Yeah, and uh, it just it's just a hundredth here, a hundredth there. Those hundredths become tenths, and uh, with ten laps to go, those tenths become full seconds. Uh, we could still yet have a runaway winner, prove be wrong once and for all, but true show, to his credit, uh, him and the entire number 183 pole position motorsports powering car team, uh, you know, he's from Miami Beach, is Alessandro true show, and this is almost like a stroll in the sand for true show. He is inch by inch dropping the uh, Saudi USA car of Brazil, Lorenzo Viana. And there's the move for third place. That is Royce Vega. And now Samut goes side by side for fourth with Santion. Santion says, no, you've got to think and let's go forward. And uh, in turn number one, Vega has now the final step on the podium for the Benic team. But uh, both Santion and Samut want it. And if these three continue to battle, the two leaders will get even further away and Woon Bergman, Ferguson will close in. Bayerjan has dropped to ninth, and Maxwell Macha runs tenth. Yeah, Maxwell Macha caught him on the wall. Oh, no, around for one of the U-Race Paralins down at turn number one. Not sure who that might have been. Was it, could that oh, have been Katowski? it was Katowski. It was oh. Katowski. He had dropped to 12th position, and uh, I think that would be game over. But it's been a very positive day on the whole. But Katowski, and of course, the semi-pro classes, they get to do it all again tomorrow. Out of the uh, final turn and onto the front stretch for uh, Alessandro Trucho and uh, Lorenzo Varela down to turn number one, this time by nine down, nine to go. Varela had really closed up coming out of turn 10. It looked like for a moment we had some hope that he was gonna get back to the lead, Henry, but what a run through that final sector for Trucho to pull that gap back out again. And these guys here, they're, they're just going to, I think, be fighting for a bronze medal. They're back to now three seconds away and, and unfortunately just not making any headway. They, they were not that much slower. Again, half a tenth, but half a tenth every single yep. lap from Alessandro Truchot. I mean, this kid is just incredible. A tenth of a second off his best time uh, for the last four laps. Metronomic lappery from Alessandro Trucho, and that comes from seat time. He's been in Italy, he's been in Europe, and it's just lap after lap after lap, and you train yourself. It's just focus, next corner, apex, next corner, braking zone, apex, acceleration point. You know, <laughs> eat, sleep, lap, repeat. And he's been that way, wired and loving every second of it since he was uh, five years old, test driving kid carts. Uh, they've got him even starting to test cars at his young age. Uh, I mean, he is just unbelievable how much uh, uh, he loves to drive anything with four wheels. And uh, all that training, every bit of it paying off right now in a race like this, in a draft-dependent class like Mini Swift, to be able to slowly pull away, inch yourself away uh, from the competition, really, uh, Alessandro Truchio. Half a second to uh, Varela. That time was the first time it evened out. And for the first time in a long time, third, fourth, and fifth actually made up about a half-tenth. Dropped it from 2.9 down to 2.8. So maybe a little late fade. 
and if they battle, small chance. But again, he's just so perfect in this final sector. Watch this here when the leaders come through uh, for uh, True Show. We'll, we'll see ne maybe next time how he is over the curbing because that's where I feel like he is just pulling away uh, out of this final turn. He's not necessarily a lot better in some other sections, but there he's phenomenal. And I was going to say, also, as we look at, as we look at the last section, look at the two different driving styles of our two leaders. Varela is moving around in the seat, trying to sort of use his body weight to affect the grip. Trucho doesn't move. Now, if you follow him through the next few corners, Xander, and you can see there, as Varela, especially through turns 9 and 10, you know, there's one, one distinct style, and another distinct style. True show style tells me that that car is behaving better. He's not pushing as hard as Varela is. And Varela is pushing really hard. And you know what? The Reds of Varela is closing back in. Yeah, he is. I mean, he closed in a ton through turns eight and nine that time. Out of turn number 10, a little bit of a wider arc there. Still nothing back for third, fourth, and fifth either. And uh, sixth and seventh are actually the fastest two, Ashton Woon and Troy Ferguson. But uh, Trucho avoiding the curbs, I think that's making it where he's being able to be a little more consistent and uh, maybe keeping that in his pocket to slam those on the final few laps so wow. that cart stays together as well. Be yeah, because Varela's use of the curbs is helping. You know, he's Varela is driving harder than Trucho at the moment. That's clear to see. And is it working? Yes, it is. New leader, Lorenzo Varela on lap 13 out of 18. That wasn't in the script. Now they're wheel to wheel. Varela toughs it out on the outside and keeps the Sony car in front. So, True Show now has to see has he learned any of that European style aggression? He hopes so, because he's gonna need to he's gonna need it to beat Lorenzo Varela and the Sony USA cars. And if they fight too early, too much here, uh, that third, fourth, fifth place group, they have not given up hope no. just yet. They're 2.6 seconds away. Mark it down to maybe 2.4, 2.5 after that pass. If they start going at it, Varela versus Trucho, it could be those three joining, and it could be Troy Ferguson and Ashton Moon, who now own the fast lap of the race, and for the last few laps, have been a little bit quicker than everybody. Now, we are down to just a matter of five laps to go. 13 completed, Mini Swift, down to turn five here for Lorenzo Varela and Alessandro Trucho. Now we will see if Trucho starts to use the curbs as well. You mentioned earlier, Xander, that he was maybe keeping those curbs in his back pocket uh, if need be. Well, if he needs to use those curbs, and everyone knows you've got to use curbs here at uh, Orlando Car Center, yes. Now he's uh, climbing those curbs a little bit, but is it too late? Has he lost the flow that he had earlier on? Because Varela, there he is hunching over in the cart, that different style. Now, Truso, you can see him ducking down a bit more behind the NASA panel, trying to create maximum aerodynamic efficiency, and they're both clouting the curbs. They got 2.3 seconds in hand over Vegas, Santion, and Samut as we start lap 15 out of 18. Yeah, another lap in the books here. Another quick time uh, for Troy Ferguson. Uh, that kid is just on a roll right now. You can see the gaps coming down. He's down to 3.4 away from the lead as the lead changes. And there goes True Show through. That'll be another 10th given to that next group. But that group is now going to be uh, battling here soon because Ferguson's arrived, Woon has arrived, and uh, that is going to definitely hurt their progress towards the leaders. And every pass they made, Varela and Trucho, it's been almost seamless. They haven't fought back and forth. They haven't defended. They haven't just gone three corners in a row side by side. All right, you go through, I'll tuck in, wait a lap. You go through, I'll tuck in, wait a lap. And that's managed that gap beautifully uh, back to the next group that are all staying in line and praying on the downfall of the top two. But the problem is, Xander, is that we're going to get to the stage where they can't wait a lap because there will be no more laps to go. We are in two the closing stages and business I am sure is gonna pick up look at the gap now it's come down to 2.1 seconds between the top two and the chasing pack of Vega Santion Samut and Ferguson with Wound just about holding on in seventh and it's Bergman Matcha and John John McClellan rounding out the top ten De Janeiro by Urjon and G Simone Schneegenberg Garcia Zuluaga Baruch from the back of the grid up into 18th Marx Ruiz and Jensen that's your top 20 but it's all eyes on these two drivers now down the back stretch here with two and a half laps to go 
Varela still pushing Trucho. Trucho not yet defending. You saw Varela take a quick look over the shoulder back to this group to check the gap, make sure he had plenty of time and insurance built up to battle as uh, Royce Vega leads it, has a little bit of a gap back to Valentino Santian and company. Big curb launch there for the two of them. And to the front stretch we go. Two laps to go. Trucho has Varela still tucked right behind him down to turn to one. Yes, indeed, through turn number one. A good exit out of turn two for the Sony car of Varela. Will he look to the inside? Not enough room, uh, but he's going to try the crossover, but he can't because uh, very, very smartly, Trucho parks it on the apex. Now coming out of turn number six into turn number seven, and Trucho suddenly using that sort of blocking move there, and you can see the mechanic there showing him the gap, Say, look, you've got a bit of a gap, you've got a bit of a gap, you don't need to defend, well, he's going to have to defend here as they head down Scrapyard straight. Yeah, he knows he's closed, and Varela, is he willing to send it right here? He's not. Not going to go in turn 10. Again, Trucho trying to back that exit up, oh. and there's a big crash. That's Enzo De Janeiro and Maxwell Macha collected over in turn eight. So they are out, and again, Varela didn't get the greatest exit, trying to set up Trucho out of turn number 10. Final lap underway here, the leaders to the white flag. Look at Royce Vega looming in the distance there in third. Yep, Vega starts the last lap, 1.6 seconds behind the two leaders. Now, Varela has to set Trucho up if he can. Trucho's not gonna leave the door open, is he? He's left the door wide open, and Varela snatches the lead. But Trucho on the outside line has momentum, but no, the Brazilian Sony Kart driver eases him wide, and now Trucho, did he hand Varela the race victory on a silver platter? We got half a lap to find out, Sander Clements. Alessandro Trucho now needs to make this move carefully because if he messes it up, Royce Vega's there. Big run to the outside, huge run to the outside in turn number 10. He'll send it to the outside. Varela closes him off there coming out of the corner. Here comes Royce Vega. He's almost there. Varela versus Trucho. Who's going to give? Final turn, last lap of the main event, over under from Trucho, up and onto the curbing, but not enough momentum. Lorenzo Varela with the lead, down to the line, here comes Vega, Varela wins in mini. Oh, and Vega takes second place oh, by man. eight hundredths of a second. What a way, Xander Clements, to round out the Sebi Pro classes in a new era of Scusa Pro Tour races. I mean, we're gonna get this later on, Xander, uh, at the end of the day, but you and, and you and Scusa worked so hard and you've been rewarded for your efforts, for the gamble you've taken with a fantastic first half of the day. Yeah, what a battle, what a run to the end. Lorenzo Varela and the Soda USA team will celebrate. We're gonna quickly switch the streams over here, folks, so keep your TVs on and be ready. It should automatically direct you the Pro Show is coming your way next here as the Mini Swifts come to a close. It's a quick run as we're a little behind the eight ball, but we're ready to roll here when we return live on YouTube for Kart Chasers coverage of the Super Karts USA Pro Tour.